getting the microphone it's wound up. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to this evening's council meeting. Good to see you all. Um, kind of total difference from last month where we had zero. So we've now plumbed both ends of the, uh, the possible numbers, and I'm glad we had enough chairs for everyone. So we'll start with apologies, uh, reasons for absence. Uh, Borough Councillor Shelton has a meeting in connection with the cinema in Ashford tonight. Which, which NBC are thinking about what to do with. Declaration by members of any interest, including me, other than, has anyone got any interest? Um, should I declare 11F? Which is that? No, it's, it's half it's half. half. It's half. No, but there's probably more to be said. Uh, no, 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 you don't need to. Um, so I don't have to approve or reject any applications. A reminder to everybody, the meeting is recorded for publication on the big silver microphone. It goes on um, the internet, on YouTube, uh, if all works. And I think it usually does work these days. So please remember that when you are speaking. Um, now I'm going to open the meeting for the public session in the usual way and uh, the first thing that we aim to do now, especially when there's a lot of people here, can I ask first of all if anyone wants to speak on any items on the agenda not counting the Stocks Road houses? How about speak? You do. Okay. If I may. On what we the on? toilet. The toilet. Okay. Yes. The toilet item has been withdrawn. So oh, you have the toilet. It won't That's be appearing. Oh, it's no problem. Does anyone else have anything they want to talk about apart from the stock slow houses? No. Okay. Well, we will carry on then with said stock slow houses. Um, the point to bear in mind, or points to bear in mind here, are that we do have a limit of three minutes for people to speak, um, subject to my discretion, and I will try and keep up with the clock. Um, Please, when um, you do speak, if you wish to, and we'll do it one at a time, then try, by all means, subscribe to what someone else has said. You know, I agree with the point about, but don't go on repeating and repeating and repeating the same point, please, because it just soaks up the time from people raising other issues. Um, there's a limit on public session 20 minutes, again subject to my discretion. I will keep an eye on the clock and see whether the thing is just rambling around in circles or whether uh, we are hearing points of importance and interest. And now I'll just start then by introducing in the front row David Tatterton, who is the developer of the Stocks Road site potentially. Some of you have seen him before on Zoom when uh, we had the meeting. We would have to have him on Zoom in those days in 2021 or thereabouts. Um, and David will tell us a bit about his current proposal so that we all know what we're talking about. David. Okay, thank you. Where would you like me? Uh, to stand up? Uh, however you like. Feel free. Probably a good idea. Whatever you okay, best. so can I actually just pass around some just small copies of the scheme just for yeah. ease, of, ease of reference? I've only got 10. So I don't know how we're going to do this. So if I they can share, they can share. So shall I give a couple to the audience? Very. Yeah, I think councillors have all seen it, David. And You've all seen it. Do you want one for a reference point? One down here for Alan. I've only got two there. So there's some uh, drawings of the units as well here, which can be passed round probably because there's only one set. Shall I start maybe over there? Okay. Off you go. So um, the application. I had to shorten it. So the application seeks planning permission for a residential development. The original application included 28 dwellings and two cell phone plots with a new access from Stocks Road. It was not recommended for approval by Ashford planning officers in July 2022, despite having the support of your ward member and the parish council. 
both Jeremy Smith and Mick Burgess spoke in favour of the application of the committee. Members of the planning committee were conflicted. After a lengthy discussion, members resolved to defer making a decision on the application for the proposal to be reviewed by the project team and council officers with a view to working towards achieving a positive resolution to the scheme. At a meeting with officers in August 2022, officers agreed that there is a need for a hybrid approach to housing provision. However, it was felt by officers that the original scheme took the hybrid approach too far as it provided for borough-wide affordable housing need, as well as meeting local housing needs. The discussion with officers confirmed that the focus should be on the provision of local need housing, i.e. providing local needs affordable housing and local needs housing for downsizers. They also required greater uh, placemaking, the incorporation of subs and swales at the side of the road and more and better green areas to better fit this part of the AOMB. A further meeting was held in October 2022 where the work on green areas and landscape character analysed was welcomed. Officers felt that the scheme was heading in the right direction but wanted the amended scheme to show that the unit numbers are reflective of scheme viability. A scheme which works for the local community whilst maintaining viability was the key aim of the officers. The amended scheme has been designed to meet specifically the requirements for both affordable and market housing local need as set out in the Wittisham Local Housing Needs Survey. The development now comprises 20 dwellings made up of seven affordable units, four downsizing units as identified in the Local Needs Survey, seven private units and two self-stroke custom built plots. The scheme incorporates significant areas of open space within the development included an extended central green corridor with a wooded belt of trees running through the centre of the site. In addition, a 50 metre landscape buffer zone will be created on the northern and eastern boundaries of the site. Furthermore, a footpath will run through the site, separate to the road which will link up with the public right-of-way through to Jubilee Field. The proposed dwellings utilise traditional materials with a modern design to create a bespoke scheme. The dwellings comprise a mixture of house types, including detached, semi-detached and terrace <coughs> properties, and they will be a maximum of two storeys in height. Many of the properties will be single storey. In fact, there will be five single storey units. So, therefore, in the project team's view, the amended scheme fully addresses the concerns expressed by the senior officers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who would like to start off from the... Can I sit down? Sorry, yeah, feel free. Uh, but if they've got particular questions then, or if you want to respond to something the they ball. say, then do, yeah. do come back. So who would like to start off from uh, uh, residents in response to what David said, or to make your own points? I don't mind asking some questions if that's okay. Um, you say it's a local needs housing scheme. Um, there's only really seven affordable local needs houses on there. Your viability study shows that the site was assessed on the, on the basis of 7.4 acres. Affordable local needs housing schemes according to Ashford's policy and according to what we were told as a village, are small schemes. They talk about the one that we've got recently was four, but in the survey that we all filled in, it mentioned a figure of six to eight. Um, do you think that that is genuinely a local needs housing scheme? You've described it as an exception site exception sites are invariably for small schemes and Ashford Borough Council's own policy is not to have market housing, though the MPPF does support it, so Ashford therefore concede that they might have some, but this seems, well you've got more market housing than you've got affordable housing. So do you think it's really fair to call it a local needs scheme? It's local needs uh, fed, uh, and I, 
think we had this conversation on Zoom, if I recall, uh, a couple of years ago, and you made a very similar point. And, uh, and I think I, I responded at that time by saying it's, it's about the infrastructure costs, it's everything else that's involved in actually bringing something forward. It's about what the cost of something is and how it's going to be paid for. And, and this is justified, it's justified in terms of the viability. It's not just the seven units, it's the additional use, the downsizing units that have been, been provided also, which are not making the best use of land. You've got to actually balance what you need with adding, adding the numbers up. Uh, a lot more could be made of this site, as, as I'm sure you're aware. You've seen the fact that it's already been reduced about twice to get it down, and there's been all sorts of discussion in the past to get to where we are now, which dramatically reduced, and it's dramatically opened up this site. Which, and, and, and in, you know, in fairness, um, I, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a lovely looking scheme, and it, does, it serves its purpose. The main it purpose the is to provide the affordable house. Is right. it not the wrong site then if, it, if we need to use 7.54 acres just to deliver this local need scheme? A section sites are usually benevolent landowners who give their land at a very reasonable price in order to um, provide these houses. <coughs> Actually, borough councils themselves have got land in the village that they paid 389000 for in 1989 and they've only ever built. Um, 12 houses on that land and got 16,000, I believe, in turn on it. So there's land in the village where these houses could perhaps be better met instead of destroying 7.4 acres of an area of outstanding natural beauty. To my mind, it, it's, it's, not, it's not justified. We shouldn't be talking about profits. We should be talking about protecting our landscape protecting our village and um, our identity and the AOMB. Yes, we need some more affordable houses, but we're actually pretty well placed compared to other villages. I was doing some research today, and we actually have 66, a comparable village, Edgerton, which has got pretty much the same, same um, population as us. I believe I had something like 28, and um, yes, 28. So we are, we do have quite a lot. We've got quite a lot of bungalows compared to other villages, actually. I was surprised at that the number that we've actually got. And maybe if they were allocated to local people instead of going to people outside the village, some of our problems, problems would, would be solved. But I agree, your scheme looks pretty good. And in a different location, I think it, it, would, it would be very nice. But I don't think it's suitable for a local I, I th needs scheme. I think um, you, you, a lot of what you say is, is really good idealism. It's a case of what can be brought forward and what is deliverable. And my job is, uh, I'm, I, people call me a developer, I'm an enabler, I make things actually happen. Yes, I understand. And all I'm doing is making something happen, so I, you know, the, the, the politics yeah, is, is something agree. else. And you yeah. clearly have your opinion, and other people will have completely yeah, different opinions. of course, opinion. I understand yeah, that. Good to hear that. Right, thanks for that, Miriam. Um, who else wants to... Yes, Jane, I can see at the back. No, it's, it's Jenny. Oh, it's Jenny's hand. We're, we're Sorry. Class, can't see which have which. solar panels on the roof and water collection tanks underneath them. Um, they will they, they will be very well advanced in terms of what they deliver. In terms they will have of what, solar panels. On they, they're them. likely to, but that, it depends rather on, on what the current thinking is of, okay. of, of the offices, which does change from time to time, but I, I, I envisage you, you will probably be right, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, mm. if, if they were built and they didn't have solar panels, sorry, can I speak? Sure. <laughs> Could people not add them later if they wanted to? I mean, uh, it's obviously. an area of sending natural beauty, you, often be, that's an issue you need a So it would have to be in, incorporated in the first design? Okay. Well, then, unless it will have to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin. Do they have um, electric charging points on all these new houses? The new Not cars? all of them. Um, I think that uh, it tends to vary from local authority to local authority. They, they have to have provide them. them in Ashford. Not on every one? On every one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, yeah. no more need. That was the answer to the question then, seemingly, that it is a requirement now. I oh, wish you luck. You're up against it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kate, you were uh, anxious about the point on uh, solar panels in AOMB earlier. 
Well, I, I have my questions are actually for the parish council and not for the, the developer. Oh. Um, okay. They're very closely related to the things that have already been asked. All right. Do you want to base them now? Yes. My first question <coughs> is: What do you, does the parish council understand by rural exception site status? It's granted in 2021. I'm afraid I didn't know about it until I read a letter to Mr. Tappan from his uh, surveyor. And does the exception apply to the whole site, two and a half hectares, or as Miriam says, seven acres, or just to a bit of it? And then I have a statement, which I'd like to make before I ask the second question, if I could. Not too long, I hope. No, the scheme proposes to accommodate up to 94 people, new ho private housing for 72 in 13 homes, and seven affordable tenancies for up to 22 people. Of 500 homes in this parish, 300 are knitted together in various densities within the village, with quite a number that were once social housing. These proposed 20 dwellings at Stocks Road. Is it fair that 13 private houses and gardens are arranged over 80% of the site, some of them taking up seven or eight times as much land as the seven affordable properties and their gardens, which take up a small proportion of the area granted rural exception for affordable housing. I estimate that the diminutive gardens of all seven could be fitted together on the garden of plot number six. Compared to garden sizes and common open, open space on forge weeds, that is mean. They don't even look onto the central communal green space of the design. I think the site plan enshrines inequality in its mean and unequal proportions. This extends to the narrow elevations and to the complete failure to include solar panels, despite the suitability of every roof to have them. It is not true that they cannot be used in an AOMB, and I believe, me personally, solar generation should be integral to the scheme throughout. Affordable housing tenants would not be homeowners, so they could not commission solar panels, but they would be the first to appreciate having them ready installed and operating to reduce their reliance on the grid. And my second question, based on all that, is what is the Parish Council's view on the climate change statement submitted in the application, in which the one good intention is to install a water butt in every garden to mitigate water stress, but which shrinks from allocating any solar panels? Okay. Right, thank you. Um, Put that fitted into three minutes. <coughs> we'll, we'll count that as three minutes, yes. Okay, uh, some more people who you, you've asked yours, Kevin. Oh, Greg. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I realise that most of the correspondence and discussion recently has been about the principle of this, but I think it probably might be useful to the meeting if I just addressed some detail. Often in situations like this, the principle is so important that one forgets to discuss the detail and it comes along later to bite. Um, so just a few comments, if I may, on, on the scheme. First of all, the layout of this application is a puzzle to me. There are some very large gaps between the dwellings, and then there are some very tight spots in amongst the site. And it makes me wonder whether either it hasn't been very thoughtfully put together, apologies, or it anticipates more development within it later, or something else I haven't thought about. But for instance, plot six is, has a very large garden, which itself compresses the affordable housing on either side, as been mentioned. Also, we have several dwellings on the site which are very, very close together. Uh, plots five and six have a gap of six meters between houses. Uh, plots 17 and 18 are only seven and a half meters apart. That's very odd. It might be picturesque, but I think it's very odd. Um, moving quickly on, on safety, uh, the site plan drawing again states that there is an existing footpath along Stocks Road. There isn't, and there isn't room for one without either narrowing Stocks Road or obtaining land off the existing properties. I don't think either is very likely. So that is a serious safety issue which needs solving. On security, I'm concerned that although the footpaths through the site 
uh, may look pleasant. There is at least one house which has got public access all the way around it, plot six particularly. Is that safe? Um, finally, on overlooking, um, the site plan actually states that there are no habitable first floor rooms facing onto Tile House. There are. On the drawing of plot number seven, bedroom two faces Tile House. It can be rectified, obviously, but I think we must be clear about what is and isn't correct. Uh, having said all that, I do actually echo Miriam's view that it could be very nice. I do have concerns about whether it should be there, but I hope that's helpful. Thank you, Greg. <coughs> Anyone else want to raise? Hi, Mick. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Mick Burgess. If you I'm Mick Burgess, yes. You mentioned earlier. I heard you in the committee, yes. <laughs> um, yes, I'm pleased to see this uh, application come forward again after two or plus years of the battle we had in 21 on it. <clears throat> and uh, I still accept that there is, it is a requirement of the village for this, and I think that is a good sign. And I'm I'm also pleased that the numbers have been dropped down too much actually, because I think there is some ground almost being wasted, but that's side the board. I would still, if I was in a position, I think I would probably still be supporting it. There is uh, there appears to be some confusion over terminology of local needs housing. Local needs housing are like the ones that are at um, Woodland View, Total Woodland View. They're not owned by a borough council, they're owned by a housing association and uh, rented out by them through the borough council perhaps they do have some work to the people who go in there but local needs in your scheme aren't local needs by the original schemes and an exception site was one that was never planned for in the first place meaning an exception where this is obviously planned for in the first place i don't know whether that makes it more complicated or less complicated for anybody listening but, uh, so it's still a good plan, and uh, I, uh, you're, you're never going to draw up a plan that's going to satisfy everybody. I know that, and you know that. So, uh, the best of luck. Thanks, Mick. Mr. This was yeah. never in the local plan. This site was rejected from the local plan as being unsuitable for any development whatsoever. Um, so it was never in the local plan. No, I didn't say it was in the No, I said an exception site. Well, it's ne it was never in any plan as an exception site or anything. How is that an exception site? Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. I think I'll take this out. Okay. <laughs> Let's leave, let's leave that one in the sense that, as we've heard, exceptions are exceptions to what was in. And, and while um, the site submission for Stocks Road never went into the local plan, I recall very well that the reason it never went into the local plan, having been submitted as a site submission, was because Ashford then said, well, now there's a planning application in place on that site. We will not take it forward. No. That's what happened at the time. Alan, no, I may I at this point have something that I'd like to read yes. out? Please. Yes. If um, Roger and Valerie Parker would have been here and they could make it, they asked that I read out what they would have said if they'd been here. Um, the context for our comments is that we live exactly opposite the site. Valerie and I apologise for not being able to be present. However, we would like to say a few words on the subject of the Stocks Road development proposal. Bearing in mind the three-minute strict rule, our comments will be fairly short and hopefully to the point. This application is easily the best of the three proposals we have been asked to comment on. Long though it is, it clearly explains the rationale for the development and there has been a definitive wish to address all the objections that have been raised in the past. The explanation of the exceptional circumstances site status and how the necessary measures to meet the requirements of this exemption will be met are clearly laid down and assuming that everything in the proposals is adhered to in the event, we cannot argue with what is proposed. The village housing survey seems to have been carefully considered and the needs of the community as assessed in this document taken into account, which must be considered plus point. While we would rather the site was left as it is, we are of the opinion that a sense of reality needs to be put forward at this time. 
there is undoubtedly an acute national housing crisis, which the next government, whatever its view, will have to address as a matter of priority. At this point, it looks almost inevitable that Labour will win the general election, and what is more, be in a strong position to ensure it is able to enact its promises with little difficulty. Their approach to greenfield sites and the problems which have to be overcome by the planning committees are well known, and therefore the chances of Wittisham escaping from housing development on a large scale in the future look bleak. It is therefore our contention that the better option at this point in time is to accept what seems inevitable with a development plan which, if anything, underplays the potential of the site, rather than having a large housing development scheme foisted on us. Looking at the results in Ham Street and Robenden, to name but two local communities, we are tending to side with it, accepting the proposals. The discussion seems to boil down to a matter of principle versus an acceptance of a plan which would be, in our view, sustainable for the village and would, mel and would meld in well with the general world and gentle ambience, which we are rightly very proud of. Thank you. Right. Does anyone else want to raise anything in the public session on the houses? No? Oh, Can I tell you, obviously, I've heard a number of uh, residents of the village make points to me over the last few days when this came up and have asked if I would, well, maybe, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I, I've tried to summarise some of them. Um, there was the concern over the um, uh, availability of school places at Wittisham School, mm. primary school, and it was reconfirmed that residents, children of the parish, have uh, first first dibs on that, if I can use that highly technical term. I was told last night that the pupils were about 120 the total, um, and about 80% are currently Wittisham, which by my calculation leaves, I don't know, 24 places. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, you've got children coming in from Tenterden, uh, children coming in from Appledore, and, and outside of the, uh, of the parish. And the point was made to me that these, the, you know, the, the, the people that are coming into this, the, this development are not all going to have primary school aged children on day one, so there's going to be some sort of staggered start, but they, were, they felt that it was going to be able to cope with that for which should be. But obviously people in Tenterden, Appledore, and wherever will, will, will miss out. The second point was that there are two self-build plots here. And over a period of time, wittisham has got some really good tradespeople here, and there are several who are very interested in the possibility of a self-build in their own village. Um, that was another point uh, that, that was made. Um, the other two points were, number one, uh, the cost of housing, particularly for young people and, and first-time buyers, or second-time buyers. Um, some of you might have seen in the Sunday Times the weekend before last, the recent research shows that the average time for a young couple to save up for a deposit in a house that they can afford is now 14, one for 14 years. Um, I guess they won't be young people by the time they can reach that. Uh, and the final thing was this whole issue of affordable housing. I came onto the Parish Council in uh, 2011, and uh, since then, uh, the affordable housing that's been built in the parish, by the terminology used, uh, is the grand total of zero. We have built no affordable housing in this parish. In terms of local needs housing, we have. Um, in 2018, there were four three-bedroomed houses uh, built. The last time that we had uh, local needs housing of any sort was pre-1996. I think Miriam mentioned the date, and that was Woodlands View of 12. So uh, my, my maths worked out, if we built four in 28 years, that's one-sixth of a house in a, in a year. Um, I did some research myself today, um, just on, on uh, right move. Some of you will be familiar with the right move property site. Um, I took the top ten houses in Wittisham that came up for sale. I excluded one that was a very high price because that would have skewed it. Um, right, now, uh, right now, the average price in the top ten, as they come up, is um, three quarters of a million. Uh, I thought, well, hang on a minute, there must be others. I found three houses for sale in Wittisham um, under um, half a million, under half, three under half a million. So if I put the, the 10 cheapest, uh, the average price at the moment is approaching 600,000. I don't know if any of you got children who want to come and live in the village or people in the village have mentioned in previous meetings their children can't afford to stay here, but it was, I was asked by several people to point out that 
there isn't any affordable housing mm -hmm. in Wittisham at the moment. And if we don't build that, the village will die. But Paul, it's yeah, not, yeah, I agree. It's not yeah. for purchase the affordable housing, which is, which is going on to the exception site. Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. An exception site, a rural exception site for affordable housing. The yeah. exception is being made in order to create affordable housing. It's affordable housing for rent through a housing association or even a local authority. Yeah. Those seven houses will not be for sale at 235,000. <laughs> Well, I'm just, read, I'm just reading out what I was asked to put forward, that Wittisham has got, in, in very succinct terms, the most appalling track record of building affordable housing. And no one, I defy anyone to put forward an argument that says, no, we've got a wonderful affordable housing. Well, and I also am confused about where, about where the other uh, land plots are that can build sufficient mm -hmm. housing. Mm -hmm. And the final point, someone's already raised this, but it is worth making, I th again, I think, because several people have made this. If we just uh, approach this like the proverbial ostrich, we've already seen two or maybe three attempts to build dense housing. One was right in the middle coming out opposite Dax's shop near enough mm. and we will have this foisted upon us. We cannot mm. just sit on our hands mm. and do nothing. To use the proverbial phrase that's used in this village, sometimes we have to grasp the nettle. And I, I, I'm just <coughs> repeating what a number of people have told me over the last nine days, eight days, sorry. Okay, can I, uh, David, just ask, of the seven houses that are what we are calling loosely affordable, whether that's correct, because these definitions are very convoluted. What is actually expected to happen to those seven houses? Will they be on staircasing? Will they be housing associations? Do you not know yet? What's the plan? Well, we, we, uh, we have been working with a uh, town country housing association, and the, the normal thing to do is that they would be for, for rent. I, 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 was, I, can't, I can't guarantee that because I'm not there. Right. Uh, and like everybody over uh, the last couple of years, their uh, circumstances have changed because of the, the economy. Um, that's a normal case. So if they were to, if, if there were any of them were to be, does it, everybody knows the difference between shared ownership and uh, rented? And do I need to clarify? Can I just, um, I, I lived in um, housing association accommodation in Ashford uh, when I was younger. Not saying how to do uh, quite a bit younger, and it's the first time I'd ever been able to afford something for rent, which actually was good, because if I was broke, they came and did it, the rent was manageable, and I was really sorry to leave. And it was, uh, you know, so if we have a housing association, properties for people to rent, is a really good stepping stone for them to get onto the housing, hmm. you know, get their breath, get some money behind them if they want to go on and buy. Um, it gives them a chance to actually have, you know, a breathing space. So I, I actually think that... Um, Housing association, housing is very useful for people starting out. Thank you. Can we just and ask, would this on, just just a tick. be Miriam, adopted just a by tick. the council? Miriam, just a tick please. Can I just clarify what you said, David? Because last time I think you thought they would go to staircasing the 12. This time it's actually, you can't be sure, but more likely to go to rent. It is, yes. Good. Miriam. Would, the, would this estate be adopted by the council? No, the roads are not because it's actually adoptable standard. So the roads are not going to be built to adoptable standard? Oh, no, and it's just, if you look at the layout of it, it's yeah, not okay. standard layout. So and what I'm getting to then, and so all these green areas, where's the cost of maintaining all these green they areas they going will, to come will, from? They will not be passed on to the housing, if that's the point that you have. So the people in the market yes. housing yes. Will, will, will have to pay yes. for the cost of that. That's going to be a sizable amount of money if you've got a management company um, maintaining all that. Um, that's not going to make these houses too attractive because there's a lot of bad publicity about these non-maintained estates and how much it's costing people. Um, what, it, what is you, your reasoning for it not being adopted is simply because it's not going to be built to adoptable standard? No, my reasoning is because it's in the countryside, it's in an area of outstanding. But outstanding every region. single other and road it's also is very, being it's adopted. Very, it's spread out. The yeah. scheme is spread out. I mean, it, it's. I, I, we can do. We, we can. We, we can make it a lot denser, and we can have Don't an adopted road. But that'd be an awful lot of other problems. Yeah, but what, every it's other road problem. in Bridgeham is adopted, as far as that, the main road is quite but new. Is a, an adopted road. Um, 
it, it seems to me that there's going to be an awful lot of money needed to maintain that three... But it's for the occupiers, isn't it, to pay? Not, yeah, but not it's going yourself. to be... I'm not sure this is going to make the houses that attractive when you've got on top of your mortgage... OK, you know, yeah, that's it's, a it's a point, it's a point we understand, and a fair one, and we've learned <coughs> that two years ago as well. Yeah. I think the issue is that, as, as David has just mentioned, making it adoptable and getting it adopted is quite tough if you're going to have the sort of scheme that it is. And if it was adoptable, then it's, I suspect, slightly less likely that you'd get the scheme that we've all admired. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a spread out scheme, it's mm -hmm. got a lot of green space, and you're absolutely, you make a good point, by the way, there's a lot of money going to be needed between those people, but they're going to have... Um, Good market houses yeah, to, talking about affordable to benefit housing, from. It's not going to be affordable. The affordable ones won't, they won't be doing it. So it's going to be. Are there any other points to yeah. make? Can I just? Yeah, please, John. <coughs> David, this is a scheme, or this a scheme on this particular area has now come forward. I think for the third time. Um, are we to assume that you've been in discussions with the planners at Ashford, and in as far as they're able to? Um, encouraged you to think that uh, changing it in the manner that you have is more likely to achieve a nod from Ashford well, Council. We, we've had several meetings with them uh, to, to uh, they've engaged with us because of the outcome of the, the, the committee when they were they were asked by the, the planning committee to do just that and so what's come out of, of, uh, of those two meetings is uh, opening up the site, reducing the number of units, and that was based on viability. So we've, 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 uh, we've had to produce a, a, a viability of the scheme to make sure that what we're putting on the site is what is needed no more. So the fact that it's been rejected absolutely previously, also at appeal on grounds of damage to the AOMB. But that was a lot more units, and it's completely I, I different scheme. That, yes. that wasn't me. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else, because we've gone well over our normal time, very quickly, Kate? Would you like me to send you, parish councillors, a very useful guide, the parish councillor's guide to affordable housing, at, reviewed in 2021 from the Rural Housing Alliance, which it, I found incredibly useful today, okay. in amassing my evidence. Very, very, very interesting, Kate, but firstly, we'll take a decision tonight, and, and secondly, we sometimes, I don't know if councillors will take their views, we sometimes don't stray into the more technical areas of planner speak because whatever sure. we decide, whatever we decide, they go their own way anyway. You get what you get. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm shocked yeah. where you are. Okay. In other words, it's not for us to decide some of those things. We're giving a local view, and as you know, it'll be decided by, um, in this case, um, planning committee, uh, having heard all the comments that you put in on their website, portal, uh, coupled with our recommendation, which goes in the same way, uh, coupled with the other statutory people, and then finally their planner's recommendation, and then they'll take their own view. It won't be our view, it'll be their view. Anyone else want to raise anything? Can I just say something about the schools? Um, I don't know about British one, but I am a trustee of the Kensington Schools Trust, which has the primary schools in Tetterton and Walsingham and Bittenden as part of the trust. And we're looking at a significant reduction in the uh, intake of, of young people into our primary schools over the next few years. Uh, and so I don't think any problem locally of, of, of school places being available. And I also noticed that the um, KCC have put in for money, I think, under the S106 for places in Tetterton anyway. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at the alternative. But they always do that anyway. They always go and grab money. It never goes to school here, it always goes to KCC. I'm afraid. Okay, can I close the public session? Jeremy, just one question Chris, for David. I, I'm following. If the intended project went ahead, would you be making provision for a pathway from the entry to Tyler House? Can you show me where that is on the plan, please? I mean, we've referred to a, a pathway through the site. Is it additional? Not additional, by the roadway. Say again, sorry. 
That's the one that Greg already shown. Yeah. 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 So this would be this one here. It does do the pass both. This one here? Yes. No, this one here. Okay, so the one that, that exists existing footpath. As Greg said, there's no footpath from here. But where does he go to? Does he does he There is none between here and the pleasant. There isn't a verge and an at the moment on this yeah. side. But on the left on the side that you're intended building. Well I think we put the path through the village so that we because there's land ownership issues on who owns the land. It's not necessarily owned by the highway authority. So you might not be able to, to do it. It was looked at. It was looked at. It was looked at, and the, be, the best alternative, and it was better, was, was that way. It was away from the traffic. Right. I think the thing here is, if you're talking about what I believe you are, <clears throat> the one on the north side of Stocks Road, Greg has pointed out he doesn't believe there's room for. That's right. You and I, David, when we did a walk around, I suggested you might be able to cross the road and use the benefit of parish council land to reach the bus stop that way on the inside of the hedge mm -hmm. with a little bit of construction in there which would be a, a sensible route and it takes people off the road but you do have to move along the north side a little bit where, where there is room before you can cross the road and you've got to cross the road where you've got visibility mm. so it's it's a maybe alternative but mm. the point that Greg is can, made yeah. is there may not be room for what you call existing which is not existing it's not there at all Hmm. We, I mean, if if the, the land is there in public ownership and it's not in somebody else's ownership, then then we, we could look at that. Well, on the south side, uh, you've got the yeah. edge on the road, and then you've got our own land. You've got the but edging here yeah. at the moment. You, you, what about here? I don't know who owns this bit. Well, I think that's. On the other side of the road. The highway land on the other side of the road is much. It's much wider on this side of the road, but it goes out to the yeah. But it only comes about here, you see. The, the tell about there isn't, so I don't know who owns that little bit of land there. But it, it would be, be very advantageous if the, there could be a connection straight through rather than going all the way around necessarily. Can I, can I just point out, I mean, I, I did actually, I do occasionally walk along the road rather than drive, and I walked from the bus stop to yes. the garage. Yeah. Um, a pass which is next to where the parkers live, and it, there's no road, there's no way to walk at all there. That's really, precisely the point I'm really, making. Really yeah. you, you're misunderstanding what I was trying to say, um, Angela. Sorry, what we talked about before was cutting through the hedge yes. just by the garage, no, I haven't misunderstood and then going that, through yeah. go inside the coronation field, okay, yeah. which then brings you to the gate to come back out to yeah. the bus stop well, that sounds good. and on to the shop. Yeah. Or alternatively, brings you onto the footpath route, which takes you down the street and out the gate there. Okay. So you don't walk around the side of the. Um, so, so it's uh, all in hand, basically. Is that what you're saying? It's not in hand. It's been suggested right. for the developer yeah. to decide what to do. Right. But given that Greg has pointed out in his view, yeah. there is no room mm. on the north. Mm. Yeah. There is no room on the south, probably on the outside of the hedge. Right. I was the possibility of using the, the possibility of the parish council with obviously developer um, support mm. paving with a little tarmac path out to a gate just by the garage. Right. Okay. Which we probably have to get KCC approval to put the gate in, yeah. the highway. And then from that point cross the road, you're you're in the part going towards the scheme where there is more room. Right. Okay. They'd have to survey it, but it's a, it was an idea, it's not a proposal. Mm. But it, so it's it obviously it crucial they've got to have a path somewhere. Would it be a safe crossing, do you think? That's, got it. That's why I because said there's, the a bend, is very fast. there's a bend there, you can see on the bend. thing here. It doesn't look very much on the map, mm. but it's actually it enough that you can't see. Yeah. So they've got to cross within close range of yeah. that corner, which yeah. is just by the garage. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a question for you, David, but just just suddenly dawned on me, and you mentioned about the safe crossing. If there isn't a room on the north side, but there's potentially opportunity on the south side, wouldn't that be a marvellous place for a pedestrian crossing, mm -hmm. which also it potentially would. slow traffic yeah. coming traffic's into the village? Yeah, traffic is dreadful from there. <coughs> I mean, I, 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 I know that getting a pedestrian crossing is a bit like walking over broken glass for ten years, because of all sorts of regulations, but... It seems to me that this is the probably the time yeah. to at least investigate it and then 
you know, we do have people you know, coming into the village at, at maybe slightly higher than 30 miles an hour. So yeah. it could potentially, this could potentially be a, uh, a useful um, yeah. safety uh, initiative as well. Safety's got cool. a bit Could I suggest that in whatever communicated it is you have with Ashford, you mention this so that... We've done before, but... Can do it if you do it again, then, mm. uh, I mean, we can do what we can do our, our bit, but we give up. It would be a great shame to wait until someone gets killed before something's done about it, and it is a possibility that. Yeah. Okay, uh, Kate, you've been patient. Um, thank you. The, the uh, consultants' traffic statistics taken in uh, 2020 recorded a week of road use, documenting 85% of vehicles going at between 46 and 48 miles mm. an hour on that stretch of road, yeah. both ways, even inside the 30 mile an hour limit. We're talking about a thousand vehicles passing every weekday and 750 at weekends and with the new settlement that would generate an estimated 10 percent more vehicular journeys they probably wouldn't be going so fast if they'd only just left the stocks road field but it it's really important to get the highways aspect right yes. and that's really important the creation of a housing site in AOMB because one of the things that the AOMB asks for in I think the national plan mm. framework is for hugely modern ways of thinking about sustainable living and especially about transport issues. So getting to the bus or cycling or riding your horse or perhaps just walking has got to be thought sure. about in relation to this sure. site okay. development. Um, a couple of things to come back on there for everyone to understand. Firstly, um, unless the scheme has changed, it was going to move the 30 mile an hour limit out another 120 metres mm -hmm. from where it is by Miriam's entrance at the moment, which does two things that are useful. Firstly, it does, because people don't seem to slow down to 30 something until they're in the 30 limit. So the sooner they get into the 30 limit, the sooner they start slowing down. Secondly, and potentially very usefully, the um, little machine that we have uh, in the parish that we move around, which says how fast you're going, the post is right up almost at the war memorial because that's the only place highways would let us have it because the area it's surveying has to be within the 30 limit and it obviously has to be a straight road. If that if when the limit is moved 120 metres out past sort of Stocksway area or towards Stocksway, stop, towards Stocksway, maybe Mount Pleasant, you've got actually a long straight stretch there that will be within the 30 limit and therefore I would en envisage that the sign can be moved out and therefore be um, flashing at people to tell them to slow down before they get to the mm. more dangerous area. Yeah, and the pedestrian crossing would really enhance that. Pedestrian crossing, yeah, yeah, traffic yeah. lights, you, you name it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, can, can I close the public session? Do you want to add, up, add, add anything perhaps before I do the session? Or something else? <coughs> well, yes, I'm, uh, I'm quite, uh, quite happy in the sense that I've listened to some of the points that have been made. <coughs> So I'm quite happy to, to work to, to, uh, to address the issues with the, the, uh, the pavement and so on and the, and the safety issues. We'll certainly <coughs> be adhering to um, what is required so far as our eco approaches of the scheme is concerned. Um, and I, I, uh, I take aboard uh, most everything you said, not everything. Because I've got to balance it with make, keeping the thing, it's been a real pain to make the thing viable because of all the complete, competing interests. Uh, and we've done as well as we can. We've got the units down to, uh, and we've opened the scheme up. Good, okay. Thank you very and much. We've provided the affordable housing in the need server. So you got another point, Ty? Yeah. No, just a question because obviously I don't come very often. But when you close public sessions, does that mean? there's no more questions on any subject that the public can answer? It does. It means there's no more questions. You can't take part in the parish council meeting when it resumes, but you are all entitled to stay here as long as you like to listen. So how are you able to ask a question if you're coming? You have to put it forward on an agenda a month before? You can ask the question now. But it's not on this 
No. It, okay, well, that's why I asked at the beginning if there was anything else that people no, wanted yeah, to No, you were asking about what was on the letter, not on the... Oh, uh, yes, I was. was you, well, you didn't say any of the questions. No, you're right, you're, you're, the you're letter. right, Kevin, in, in this respect. Questions and points generally are on items for the agenda. Yeah. What you are able to do is suggest items you'd like on a future agenda. On a future agenda. Yeah. So Because we're not going to deal, we're not entitled under the law to deal with anything that's not on the agenda. Okay. We have to just go with what's been given due notice. Okay. No problem. Okay. Do you want to raise something for a future agenda? Yeah. yeah. Go on. The swan. The swan. The swan public you, house. You'd like the swan on a future agenda for us to discuss? Yes. Is there a sort of an aspect to the discussion? Can you point us in the right direction? I don't want to show my cards. <laughs> Unless you want to listen to my cards. <laughs> you can make a point now and we'll put it on a future agenda. Can I make a point? Yes, I'll, only take, I'll, I'll only take a maximum of three minutes. Exactly. I shall time you, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been listening to your uh, recorded messages on YouTube, which I only just discovered couple of weeks ago I knew nothing about so I listened to them and I noticed that the pub was being discussed in October just gone by and uh, you wanted to know what the uh, uh, state of where it was the sp uh, of what was going on with the pub I noticed that one of the councillors mentioned did the village want a pub very good question I also noticed uh, 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 someone mentioned, or Jeremy mentioned, that it's only traded with people from outside the village. Uh, I, and that I only do well with drinkers, but mostly they're from outside of the village. Um, it was discussed on how much I paid for the pub. I actually paid £520,000 for the pub, including stamp duty. Uh, it was also described in the meeting that it is a very ugly pub and it does not invite people in. This is all in the recording, so you can go back and check them. Uh, and also it does not look open. It's open five days a week, every week of the year, apart from two weeks when I go on holiday. Uh, uh, it looks a damn sight better than when I bought it. Uh, it's got a new car park, it's got uh, a garden, it's got paved areas, uh, it's been totally refurbished. I'm not in the business of trading pubs or flipping them, as it's been mentioned in the meeting. Uh, the last pub I owned, I owned for 22 years, and the one before that I owned for seven. Uh, I don't want to bore you too much, but I do feel quite uh, aggrieved. I have, uh, sorry, I don't know where he was. I have a letter here from Ashford Borough Council, which is when you put in for an AVC, or an asset of community value. I just want to raise a couple of points here. I uh, noticed that you applied for a, an asset of community value in 2016 and it expired on the 9th of May 2021. You then applied for another one in May of 2021, which was refused. Um, you, you also mentioned in the, this application that the pub has a great daytime food menu, but in your recording of October, you mentioned that I have not. I've half-heartedly tried with the food, which contradicts what you say in this. You also say this is the only pub in the village. While I pay quite a lot, lot of attention to your recordings and your minutes, there's two pubs in this village. There's the human lamb. The man decides not to open it. It is still a public house. You can check on Ashford Borough Council, and it's still registered as a pub. You can look up its rateable value. Uh, the pub provides space for specific community functions, e.g. caring altogether for the Romney Marsh. I've had the pub open now for two years. Once, on one occasion, the caring altogether for the Romney Marsh came. And that was only because we were having a by-election in this room on the same day. And so I was good enough to let you use that room. Never has it ever been used before, and never has it ever been used since. It also says that Kent County Council Mobile Library Services uses the car park from time to time as it switches its de destinations. I've only been in this room once before, and that was to come and argue, when that gentleman was over there and Mick Burgess was sitting next to him, because I came and I asked you to let Kent County Council park there, library on my car park. 
I felt it was safer. I felt that the lady could use the toilets. And I felt it to have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a soft drink. And it was safer for the residents to use. It has never been used by, Ken, uh, by uh, the library. Yet in your application for an AVC, it says the KCC Mobile Library uses the car park from time to time as it switches destinations. It also go, goes on and says uh, um, that, that a reasonable amount of the villagers want the pub to be kept open. I'd like to know where these reasonable amount of villages are, because as I look around this room, there's very, very few villages in here use the pub. I know there was a big campaign to save the pub, save the swan. Now, I've got the, I've got the, the members of the people from that uh, um, uh, save the swan. Uh, you, we, oh, by the way, we also don't mention that there's a social club in the village. That, that, is, uh, that is a licensed social club that is used for weddings, christenings, birthdays, funerals, football, cricket, uh, fates and other events. So I think it's very, very unfair when you put in an application for an AVC, which I understand why the village wants, if you don't put in all the information and you only put in what's suitable for you to give yourselves a bet better case, okay. it's not... Sorry, if I could finish, Jeremy. Oh, when I yeah, 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 I know. Could I also ask, Jeremy, you were very vocal in saving the pub. Mm -hmm. Also, John Newton there sitting at the table. Could you tell me why you don't use the pub? No food. But you use, use the, the club. club. No food. Um, you you use the can, club. Can, sorry, Julia, can I make a suggestion if it's in a public session? I think you make some very important points, Kevin. And there's a danger that we kind of rush at this. We can't make any decisions tonight. No, that's that. fair enough. I, I, think just... I, I would suggest that this, this put is properly put on the agenda mm -hmm. for the next meeting. Because yeah. you, you raised some very valid points. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to I just some want to play a fair game. I don't like a crooked game I, of I, cards. I completely agree. So I would suggest right. it gets put on the I don't properly. Have any we just feel like it's spoke about so yeah. much, but yeah. when we're not yeah. here and we read it, people that write this stuff pass our pub two to three times a day. Mm -hmm. So we're here to speak of you. No. All right. Yeah. I don't have any problems mm -hmm. with it going on the agenda. There are things that Kevin said, which as Paul said, perfectly right. There are things that are need clarifying. They need clarifying. So, for instance, we worked hard, this council, to get the library bus to go and use the pub car park. We pushed that from this council to do it. However, a particular library user afterwards petitioned, as it were, KCC, to say, no, can we please have it back where it was? And they decided to move it back where it was, rather to our annoyance. Now, that's the sort of, I mean, the library service of KCC is its own organisation. We can only make our proposals. We thought that the pub was a good idea, great when it worked, but I'm afraid they took it away. Nothing I could do about it. The letter was written in August. The, the, the library's never been on my park, car park while I've opened it. You wrote the letter in August. It's never been on my I car park. I can't give you the dates because I don't know. I've got the dates. But believe me, we pushed for it to be there, and as far as we were concerned, it moved there, and then it moved back to. It the did not move there. All right. Well, there you go. I wasn't driving the bus. Let's no, but you were writing the letter. Indeed, I was. <laughs> Let's leave uh, based on what we've done. Let's leave. Let's it base there. it on facts, not fiction. Anyway, we've got to be off. We've been enough. Let's leave it where it is. I, I'm not at all clear that the bus hadn't been there. You, I live problem. there. I can you're tell you it hasn't been problem, there. But I'm, I'm sceptical. Okay, we'll leave that. Thank Thanks you. very much for listening Thank to me. <laughs> Can I, sorry, just before you go, Kevin. Um, we have met and talked, and yeah. I've talked to Georgia and, and very much admired the way she laid into the place at the beginning, did a lot of work herself. I think the question you should ask is not why aren't you villagers coming in, but why am I not offering <coughs> the offering? <coughs> That would attract them. It's not down to us. It's down to you. Uh, that, that, is, that, is, that, is a, that is a fair point. And if I can just say, if I can just say one thing that I wrote down today, because I notice a lot of people have been writing things down today. Thirty pubs, thirty pubs close a week. That was in the Daily Mail on the 11th of February. Four thousand five hundred pubs and restaurants closed last year alone. I've advertised for chefs. We did food forty-nine hours a week. And we still couldn't get people in. 
We did excellent food, had excellent reviews. The village would not use uh, the pork. We, we're not claiming the village as such. This is a worldwide problem, and we do see that. <coughs> but there's only so, there's such an amount of time you can pay big money on big chefs after investing in the pub for so long. We just thought there's a big campaign for it. There's a want, a hunger for it. I would just say we're very disappointed that after being here two years, and we did do food, working 18 hours a day, we've done live music, <coughs> quiz nights. Now, just a little example, little example. They'll do quiz nights, and I'm not knocking them, by the way. Each to their own, they'll do quiz nights, um, bingo nights in the village hall, bring your own drink. How can I compete with I that? I can't compete with that. John, well, that, you that, that is your problem. But John, you were chairman of, of, you were chairman of Save the Swan. Up, You've it? been in the pub five times in two years, yeah. and you were the chairman of Save the Swan. Well, you obviously didn't want to save it very much. Can I what? just tell you say well, one thing? Not. Yes. And I lived in this village all my life. Okay. I've worked at the Swan many years yeah, ago. Yeah, I don't want to upset you, though. I don't want to upset you. No, and I can tell you from what I've heard from people, yeah. you upset people from the very beginning by saying, wake up with the shim on the top of your yeah. Yes, I did do that. And I don't that, deny that. And that annoyed a lot of people. And I, but we, I did do that, and I accept because that. Because you didn't specifically say it's because it was your Airbnb. Yeah. People assumed you were saying it personally to us. But did they want to put or not? The problem is, Kevin, I think John needs to make a good person. Okay, guys, come on. So, like, before we run. By the way, if the village wants to buy the book. Why are happy to sell it to them? Give you a little bit of discount. <laughs> I've actually loved okay. all this stuff. Thank you, Sally and Georgia. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can stay if you wish, but you can go. Bye bye. Two very solid pub customers there. Right. I'm going to close the public session yeah, now. Okay. Yeah. Right, Jean, we heard what you yeah. said. Thank you. Um, I'm closing the public session, so if please, you're very welcome to stay and hear the rest, but uh, <coughs> you can't take part, and please, no chattering in the back row. Um, right, we're back on the council meeting now, after an hour, um, to confirm minutes of the meeting held on 13th of February, the last meeting. Is everybody... Happy with those minutes? Yes. No. Yes. Sign them. No. No. <laughs> no. There's an error. Oh no. Oh no. 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 Um, we quote that the calm coffee number? mornings number. are twice a week and they're twice a month. Twice? Uh, where month. is it? Which number? I don't know what number yet. Though. He's got on the left. Four six two five. Four six two five is okay. the calm request for names yeah. of businesses. Oh yeah, yeah. calm holds the village twice, twice a week. A week. Yes. There's twice something a wrong here. There's something gone wrong since you read it because it says which calm hold in the village twice a week is. Oh, I'm sorry, house of wells and water business. Yes, okay, twice a month. Good. Yeah. Thank you for that. Didn't spot that, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's done. So on we go. Right, matters are rising quickly. Um, the first one is the safe entrance for the pedestrians to the War Memorial update. Um, right. I had an email dated 22nd of February from the Conservation Officer who said we needed planning permission as the steps of Wild and Sandstone are mentioned in the listing of the War Memorial. Um, but she was forwarded, forwarding the details to her colleague in planning so that they could provide clarification on it. Nothing. I chased on the 28th of February asking for the name of the colleague as I wish to put it on the, the answer on the agenda for this meeting, but still nothing. So can you ask John to go and change that? Well, I have you have this. <coughs> yeah, this is obviously. Okay. okay. Right. Um, it's frustrating because we obviously want to get on with that. Um, but uh, I mean, it was always a possibility that they would be a bit picky about that. Um, the listing is for the war memorial, but unfortunately it mentions the paving. So we can't change the paving until they give us permission. Do we, so I'm just going to try, do we at this point, I mean Mike's here to answer 
something further down? Do we want to? Do you want to? Yes, I could do that. Further up. Okay, um, you're right. Let's just cover the rest of matters arising. The bus shelter refurbishment update. It's all been finished. Um, if you've seen it, it's very nice. If you haven't, I can show you the photographs. But you've seen them anyway. I think some other photographs circulated. Um, we have got the invoice to pay. It's a rather large one for Yvonne just to do it under the delegation. So, no. is everybody happy that we're ready to pay the invoice? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. We're confirmed on that. So now you point um, Yvonne. And I will just bring in with that. The grant that we asked for from John Leeds for a thousand pounds, he um, we have it's been approved. But also, he had uh, four hundred and ninety pounds left over, so he asked for it to be rolled into ours. So it should be so one thousand four hundred and ninety. That'll be very good. Uh, it was an expensive project, but it looks magnificent, and it's by far the best version that we could get um, compared to the factory built one, which was nearly as expensive and didn't do the job. Now, we'll leap down, we've got to do a um, building, but let's jump down to mix, uh, to wax first. Um, seven. Oh, we've got that as well. I noticed Nicholas didn't stay. Oh. Because I can't spot him. Nicholas has. He, he, he went all, he, he, he went out of the right, door. He, 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 he came in and went. When, when, he walking, walking, in your ear, when he's walking to you, he went out. Yeah, no, I saw him, but then he's gone again. Okay. Well um, done. Well done. <laughs> right. Uh, things that will be of interest to our county member. Uh, number seven. Consideration of the space fronting the churchyard wall. This is one that might be for you to go away and look at with your colleagues. Um, you're familiar with the space, aren't you? Just in front of the churchyard wall, there's some brick paving, and then there's rough stone out to the curb and people park on the rough stones. Um, the first thing is that we, uh, one of the residents had an accident on the brick paving uh, about a month ago. There have been two accidents actually, one, yes. one very recently and one slightly less recently. Okay. But it happened in highway land. Yes, well, they acknowledge the 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 brick paving is their responsibility, but they, their chap did come out and look at it and he said it wasn't good enough to do anything about. But it has been an accident. Two. Um, it was a, oh, two, sorry. Two. The one I know of is a person who is um, of uh, increasing years and not huge mobility. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, potentially an issue. So that's the brick paving in front of the churchyard wall. The act is called a lot by pedestrians tripping. Yeah, trip to, trip to it, it, it's, it's, it's very broken, broken up and yeah. uneven. Yeah. Yeah. It, it needs, it needs uneven. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very ancient brick paving, but it's gradually moved. Mm -hmm. It's probably a complication is that it's in front of the churchyard wall, but it, in, it stretches to the south in front of number 18, the street, and to the north in front of the church cottages. So it, it's longer than the churchyard wall. Yes, it's, 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 but it appears to be yours and acknowledged as yours for many decades because the road highway used to have a bit of an inlet there by the church, as you might imagine. I suppose people park their horses yeah. or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, the, what then gets complicated is the bit between the, the brick paving and the road. Mm -hmm. And Yvonne has dug out and can let you have a whole series of mentions of this road with KCC, first saying it was their responsibility, then denying it was their responsibility. These are decades old. Mm -hmm. Then it wasn't their responsibility. It appears to be, and I realise the legislation on highways is complicated even by the standards of our usual legislation, it looks as though it could be regarded as highways land, but not highways owned. Because if it's highways land, you still got some responsibility, but you don't own it. Um, it's very hard right, to right and use of it for highways purposes. It it it's very hard to understand how you can have the path and the road, but not the bit between them. How do you have the path without having the bit between them? And then going on from there, and, and we'll finish your bit really here. Yeah. We've got it on the agenda to talk about whether we want to, as a parish council, put our hand up, and I don't know if we do, and take any responsibility for it. But if we take responsibility for it, I don't think we want to say 
well, okay, we'll take some responsibility if we do it. It costs us money. And then highways will come along and say, hey, you can't do that. Oh, you've got to do this and all the rest of it. So highways either relinquish it, which seemingly, according to the correspondence, means you go to the magistrates and get it taken off the highway, or something. And it's a shambles, as usual. Yeah. Well, well, could you pos possibly write to me about yes. it? <laughs> <laughs> you've got four pages. You've got yeah, yeah, I'm having a very... Dear Mike, see you <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at it. Sure. Dear Mike, see you yeah. Because of Alan. We, we, we have spoken Church to the, Church Warden, and we have spoken to the um, highway steward on a couple of occasions who, who has been up to look and I think he only looked once, yeah. although he perhaps pretended to go and come twice, but he wrote the same thing but in a different sequence to the second approach. So he, he, he said he'd been and it was a bit uneven but he wasn't going to do anything about it. Right. And that's the brick path, which yeah, yeah, hopeful. Yeah, sure. and there is correspondence going back to, I think, 1906, which reveals that the KCC, and certainly there's documentation that they did maintain it definitely between 1959 and 1981, yeah, yeah. and then and, and there was a, some sort of missive in, in 1906. So there's history yeah. there. Yeah, um, open and, space and, forming part of the public road. Yes. And, and, it, and it gives the church a little bit of a... I mean, it's, it's neglected. It, it shouldn't be neglected outside a magnificent building like the British Church, to be honest. It shouldn't. Yeah, sure. and, and, and so the, we'd like the brick path put right, and, and then Jeremy's point about the, the rest of the hard standing or the lay behind. Yeah, yeah, sure. and, and I think it's possible that a parish council would agree to take that on, but doesn't want to get its fingers burnt by no. doing the wrong thing. No. No. Thank you for that. Uh, I, you know, Nice about Wilshire, is it ever easy, are they? <laughs> Thank you. Well, just to, add, just to add to that, the, the, the one that was raised that if someone falls over and uh, badly injures themselves and, and maybe even has a blow to the head and dies, yeah. who's liable? Mm -hmm. And the feeling is at the moment yeah. it's Kent County Council. Yeah, sure. I don't know what, what the sort of uh, damages, financial damages, that is, would be or something like that, but you don't really want that yeah. happening in, in, in the area. Okay, so, so that we, we'll discuss after you've gone a bit more about what, if we want to, what we're thinking, but it's floated it with you that you can go and do. I, we yes, have you put it in, in writing, I'll address it. We haven't decided, no, no, but at the minute no, no. we don't know whether we're pushing it an open no, no, door or no, closed no, door. Let me find out a bit. Locked and bolted at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Now the next thing to, to do while our county member is here is the correspondence email from Nicholas Hurst on the road between which and Peter's Marsh. That's your special subject. Um. <laughs> You've got one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel we need to use it all. <laughs> um, well, obviously everybody knows about the um, water that just runs down the road from, sort of basically from the school down to where the Lee house is. Um, at the way things are at the moment, the ditch alongside the orchard has now been cleared. Um, the uh, Victor Mallet organised that with the landowner and um, we got Alf involved so that he would be able to supervise when they had the digger down. So you can see exactly what they've done. It was a nerve word for it, I can't remember what that was. But to make a heap between the road and the grass road, so you shouldn't get the water running down the gully. Um, on the other side of the road, we've got a couple of problems there, but Southern Water have now replaced the manhole that lifted very easily and the sewage came out. That's now had a new one bolted down, so that shouldn't happen. We're now waiting for Southern Water to come along and remove the sewage that went into the ditch. Then Mr Nunn, who owns the property behind there, will get the ditch cleared. The problem we have with, with that is that the sewage pipe is within that ditch. So that's a problem. There is also, you've got his uh, drive into it. Now he says that there is no pipe underneath because they've dug down when they were doing things with the um, telephone and the electricity and that's when they cut through the wires and he was without internet for days. And there should be obviously that you've got the ditch pipe under the um, drive, the coal entrance into the ditch the other side. He says there is no pipe, so obviously at the moment it just comes up to his um, entrance and just then overfills and 
goes down the road. He maintains it's not his responsibility. Highway says it is, because we met actually all down there, and there's a bit of a argy bargy. So he's now waiting. He says that if Highway is actually right and tell him that is his responsibility, then he will um, put this pipe through. Drainage engineer was very helpful, Howard. He's on leave, annual leave at the moment, so nothing's been, he hasn't contacted each other. That's where we stand at the moment. So once we've got that done, then I will get at Mr. Piper, I believe, to do something with the other side, so that then the water should run all the way through and down to wherever he goes to. It, 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 it gives me the impression, without knowing in detail, that if the ditch was not very noticeable when the an entrance was made into the new place for the horses, then of course they could have filled in what they didn't realise was a ditch. No, it's and of course it should have been told. Uh, so they have to get planning. <coughs> planning would insist on a, on a pipe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If he knew there was a ditch there. The ditch no, was he said, the ditch. As far as he was concerned, he, he took on what was there. If it oh, wasn't there in the first place. The into the field. Yes, it was just it was the oh, entrance into the field. Okay. He maintains that because it wasn't there, gotcha. it's not his, he okay. took it on what it was there. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. not his fault. It was there yeah. already. But he will, want it, once it's proved that it is his responsibility, he will do something better for it. Right, because that cover us on that. So it's half done and the other half is moving, yeah. which is good. It does, yes. I mean, it's, it's quite complicated with the water running down the road because it's the responsibility of the, of the landowner to look after the ditches and the responsibility of the highway to look after the highway drainage. And there's an interface there and it's worth often. It's, it's, it's My concern was that, that this water I wanted highways involved because it's eroding the road edge, it's yeah, their yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. We get road yeah, around yeah, potholes. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll take it a bit hard. Right, have I missed anything out while our county members here? That's the. the that's the churchyard wall we're going to write. Mm -hmm. That um, excellent piece of research that the clerk has done, and that correspondence. I think that probably is it, Mike. You're very welcome, of course, to stay for the rest of our. Another point, some of this is letter. Are you going to consider those, or we? And you're very worried about the widening of the road. Ah, yeah, we, we knew about that. Yeah. Um, we we realised that was on your 2100 agenda. Um, when, it, when it becomes due. <laughs> well, I just questioned you, does the parish offer us to look at it? Well, I think that the, that the response of myself and the clerk initially was. Um, the, the points he makes are generally good ones, mm -hmm. and the likelihood of having anything done about them is very low. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, no, we, we are, as you know, well know, desperately short of money, and, and, uh, and there are many, many, many narrow roads in the county. Thousands of miles. I hope you don't mind me asking this, Mike, but I'm asking you on behalf of many, many people, and I know you won't have a, 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 an easy, perfect answer, but in, in summary, we, we face pothole after pothole after pothole, over, and also into Sussex, by the way. What, what's, what's your sort of, I don't know quite how to phrase it, but I suppose, what's your sort of view, what's going to be done possibly? I realise that KCC's budget is absolutely, you know, being cut up at the knees, so to speak, but I do feel it's a wasted opportunity not to at least ask you to maybe give a, 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 a thought on, on that. So we, we did have a good it. session last night. I did invite the cabinet member for highways and Neil Bacon to come to Tenton uh, and request the town council to, to talk to them about the highways problems and the roads problems of Kent. Uh, and he gave, I think, a very, a very honest and, and realistic appraisal of where we are and what we're trying to do. Uh, I mean, the, the, the answer is, of course, uh, obviously, is money. We are desperately short of money. We are looking. Uh, right down the barrel of the gun at the moment, um, along with many, many other top tier authorities. But this is not <coughs> money in the system to pay for our statutory obligations. This is the problem, uh, which we can't avoid. We can't, and, we, and we therefore have to make our savings where we can. And that means many of our staff, uh, many of our discretionary services, such as ones I recent, until recently looked after, are being squeezed to death. Um, and things like highways, inevitably, which are, are statutory, but they, we can trim the edges there. But you can't very different in the edges on social care. Um, so that so they get squeezed very badly, and that's where we are right now. 
Uh, we are, our, our absolute statutory obligation is to make the roads safe, and the highways will argue with you that the roads are safe. Now, there's much debate about that, and I understand mm -hmm. quite clearly where everyone's coming from, but nevertheless, their view as professional is that the roads are being kept safe. They may not be pretty, but they are safe, um, and that is our absolute obligation. Um, uh, with, with a bit more money coming in, um, the government did, did produce some money um, recently, you may have read about mm -hmm. 130 million pounds to Kent over over 11 years and, and very heavily backloaded. So most of the money is coming out in later years. And presumably the government said there's a change of administration and somebody else is probably there. And, uh, um, but that's being a bit cynical. But I mean, that has been very heavily backloaded. Good. I think the, uh, the net result of that is that we were getting about £6 million this year, which we are going to devote almost entirely to a highway, to a pothole blitz starting now and running through to August. So you will see a significant amount of work taking place over the next few months. As it's going to be have, we are managing to get this, with this £6 million, pound, get a pothole blitz in action. We're also looking at as time being forward where we can, proper surface, especially surface improvements that were properly engineered so we don't just have these potholes all the time. And there's certainly a bit of work around Tenterden, and if you, any area you feel is so bad that, that it would benefit enormously from having a proper um, surface overview, then they, they tell us about it. And, and please, please keep reporting potholes. I mean, I, I know it's as frustrating when you report them when you don't think anything's been done, but it does actually add to the, add to the evidence of base in which we can uh, make decisions on the potholes, this particularly. Uh, and I, I think you were written to by, by um, Lisa Willoughby, giving the list of roads in the, in the area, which I mean, I think we now have this potholes. I don't know if she knows that, but Lisa Willoughby is retired. Well, it's before she went, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. If you haven't, I'll I haven't had anything on potholes. We have. Yeah, well, she wrote, a, she wrote a letter on about potholes blitz, and she wrote all parish council and to me. Um, and so, if you haven't had it, I will, I will make sure you get it. Thank you, Sinead. One of the unfortunate things is, and there's a good case in point, just around the double bend at the Swan, there are a whole number of potholes there that have been repaired over the last few yeah. years. Mm -hmm. They all come back. <coughs> and then, you know, the sort of average age that they last to is probably three years or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, you, as more and more get dug up to repair a pothole, you're almost, you know, you need to budget for three years' time to do it again. Yeah. Well, that's an actual area, Jeremy, where it would be helpful to, to let us know. I mean, I'm, yeah, and, yeah. And I'll try and suggest that we do a proper, so, proper treatment of it yeah. rather than keep a paying potholes. Uh, one good point about highways, which I think is, is fair to make, Neil Baker, you said? Baker, yeah. Neil Baker came to the um, seminar, the oh, yeah. seminar yeah. before, no, the, well, the one you do for the parishes, before Christmas, yeah. about November. We both attended it on Zoom. Oh, he was, in his circumstances, he was very good. Mm -hmm. uh, he spoke well, um, and we were still getting over the predecessor, I'm afraid. He spoke well and he stayed throughout the whole seminar. So, you know, absolutely 10 out of 10 for him doing what he needed to do. Well, he got a round of applause from Tenterden, which I thought was remarkable. Well, he, he's, got, he's, got right, he's got the right um, approach. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah. He went into it absolutely. And it's a tough, it's a tough. Yeah. We have a problem and, yeah. and we're doing our best. I think Alan, 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 Alan. John. I'm oh, sorry, Alan first. It's Alan first. Sorry. I, I don't know whether this is a misquote. Is it in order to ask Michael a question? On, on, on something that's not on the agenda. Well, could I just say we've got our annual parish meeting at the next meeting. We have. Yes. Mike will be, be, here again. be here for that. Then that will be a this general, might just need a, a, a straight one word answer. Yes, yes or no? Whatever you Go think. on then, quick. It's the toilet block, I'm afraid, at the church, and you generously, your fund generously in 2011 gave us a small grant to refurbish it mm -hmm. on the condition that it was open to members of the village, mm -hmm. which it has been. We've had problems with vandalism and so on, and it's 2024 now. Does that condition apply for ever? <laughs> <laughs> that it remains open to the village for use? I mean, it was the smallest grant we had, and I mean, you might say yes, you might say uh, there's a qualification. I don't know. I don't know who's the answer to that, but I, if you like, I'll try and find out. Okay. It's not on the agenda tonight because there seems to be more discussion going on in the background. Yes. It's, it's all got over time, mm -hmm. yeah. John? Um, I just wonder, Mike, if you could ask the relevant department for a bit of joined up thinking on the provision of, of road closed notices and the actual works. They should be combined. The contractor yeah. will, yeah, his, his own staff will put the notices out and then they'll start working. 
when they finish working, they'll take them away. There's more frustration almost than potholes by road close notices where there's no work in progress. It's a major problem, John, for us, and it's nothing to do usually with KCT. It's very often utilities uh, who are their own masters. Uh, we, are, we are trying very hard to address the question. We've got a special study group now in the County Council addressing the whole question of utilities and their rights and what we can do about it. There are two problems here. One is that we, are, we probably are fault, we're not supervising them sufficiently, and can we put more effort into that? And the other one is the legislation, where the, the utilities have the right to, up to dig up the highway at, 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 at no notice whatsoever, giving us two hours notice and that's it, provided they can declare an emergency. And that's their, they're up to them whether they declare it or not, so it's entirely in their hands. And that means they can just dig up your potholes. So all our attempts to program the work and make sure there's not no conflict, make sure the road signs won't go for a ball and short because you just dig up the, the road. Um, so that we're looking at the problem of how we can lobby government to get the legislation changed so we have, if they don't have the absolute right to dig it up without notice. Uh, at the same time, we're making sure we're, we're doing our, as much as we can to put our own house in order and I'll be supervising them properly to make sure that they are uh, kept under control. That's why I get road closure notices after on the, the day or so after, yeah. because they have done just that. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm. The point for your study group, I suggest, and they may, may well have their mind on this already, is the legislation that drives the way the system works, not the closures, mm -hmm. which means that road closed ahead is not only often not closed, mm -hmm. but you have no idea where it's closed. Mm -hmm. And when you see diversion this way, diversion that way, diversion ends, diversion anything, you have no idea where it relates to because you don't know who they're diverting from where to where. <laughs> and, and that's based on the legislation, of course, that tells you what you have to do. But if, if they can come up with a better system to put to government that you can then apply so that we know where the roads are closed that affect us. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a well understood problem. Uh, I must say, one of my fellow lunches in my cabinet, I went to the white, the, the black land at Cernum, and I, and it was day day, I didn't get there. I went round and <coughs> <laughs> about five times, following the diversions, you know. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Doing back to square one again. <laughs> right, I think if you wish to go, you can. So thank you very much. <laughs> but if you want to, if you want to listen to the rest, then feel free. If I may, I, I would be excused. I will be seeing you again very soon. Indeed. Next meeting. Thank you. 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 Chris, um, we're going to talk about Kevin and the Trees now. Brought you out, so uh, off you go. You then talk to us about it, are you? Or is he? No, it was just that Chris was here, so that he could yes. say anything that he thought was necessary okay. right. okay. on the okay. 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 In the trees. So we're on 11C camp and the trees. Yes. And just so that it was just it, unless it, Chris is happy to wait. We got <laughs> highly commended, didn't we? We got highly commended, yeah. That's good. Mm. Um, with uh, the clerks now, pulled herself out. Well, it, yeah, is it bringing everybody out of order? Mm. 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 While you're thinking about that, Chris, this is something of interest to you potentially if you don't know about it already. Um, John and I went to um, a meeting of the Kent Association of Local Councils in Ashford on uh, last week, and there was a presentation on Coronation Orchards Scheme. This is a government scheme to celebrate the coronation. Uh, I can, if Yvonne or Yvonne can, can send you the slides that relate to it. But essentially, DEFRA is handing out money. Ashford got £49,897. I'm not sure what they did to not get the other 113 mm -hmm. Anyway, they got £50,000. Um, it's basically to give out fruit trees for people to plant in numbers up to, I think, oh, nine. Oh, a minimum of nine and a maximum of something of other, I'm not sure now. 
um, and have to be five meters apart and what, what have you. They will be apple, pear, or cherry. It'll be for planting next December, coming this year. <coughs> uh, and it has to be on land that we've got or that Ashford has. It can go on Ashford land. We'd have to tell them. They have some in the village. Uh, it has to be land that's open to the public. And it's all in celebration of the uh, orchard. So, Yvonne, if you remember, I can send you the, yeah, the electronic one. Yes. And you would like, no doubt, to know about that so that you can help us decide what and where. Well, we have been through this before. We have indeed. Um, Ashford wanted us to plant trees. Oh, I know. I, I and so that. we said yes. And in fact, Chris was involved <coughs> an awful lot with that. Sure said where we wanted oh, them, no, what we no, wanted, no. and ABC said, no, you can't. It did. Well, this time, ABC were asked very clearly in the meeting, mm -hmm. can it go on ABC land? Yes. That's all we got. Right. Right. But you're right to say they may then change their mind. But that's what they said. Back to your Kentman and Trees, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we were highly commended. Uh, the reasons were public spaces are well managed. A mix of species and variety across the parish creating attractive framing of the countryside, the amenity land and built environment, active consideration of new planting. And there were two copies of it. Uh, the churchyard is very beautiful and some rather special trees. The elm tree there was one of a few bred by Hilliers to be resistant to Dutch that elm disease, which we planted during COVID. The Judas tree there was donated by the Kentman in the trees some years ago, but needs a lot of work to remove brambles. Maybe the advice of a tree surgeon might be useful as one side of it is growing along the ground. The flowers of the tree should also appear from the bark, as well as the branch tips, and the bramble might be preventing the tree being as impressive as it might be. There was some evidence of vandalism on an oak tree, but it remains looking healthy. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, cemetery, this is a beautiful, quiet, contemplative area. It is found by walking along a short, short footpath from the church. It is surrounded by large oaks. In an open area, a small oak has been planted in an open area, giving it room to spread. It was planted to commemorate the life of Queen Elizabeth II. Well, it wasn't. It was her platinum jubilee. Mm. And we're not quite sure how mm. well That's it's doing true. at the moment. Mm. The site is divided in two. The right side site is generally well maintained, but the left side is being left for wild flowers, etc. This sometimes leads to the growth of self-seeded saplings or saccharine growth from roots and of course the inevitable invasion of brambles. Some of this could reasonably remove, be removed and this might be an opportunity to promote volunteering. Well, this is where I spent a lot of time down there mm -hmm. and I mean, it's beautiful. I think we've been down there, that left side now. It's got daffodils, primroses, mm -hmm. Mm. Really, really pretty. So despite the fact that it was left to grow, the grass left to grow last year, it's really come through. The memorial garden by the Cenotaph, a lovely open area with oaks recording the late Queen's coronation and one planted as a memorial to Winston Churchill in 1966. There are also two beautiful red maples and an impressive well in Tonia, which was apparently planted by the lady who donated the land. The area is open to the general public and it was good to see little or no evidence of vandalism. Jubilee Field, this is an open, large open space with a children's playground. This would be a perfect place for some more planting. A suggested community orchard would seem to be an idea worth considering. The land is owned apparently by the Borough Council and so the organisation of such a plan might be difficult. However, planting of some kind would, in my, my mind, enhance the area. Lloyd's Green. This is an open area surrounded by houses and a rather unsympathetic strip of residence parking. Some planting here might be useful for softening the area. Tree species would have to be chosen so as not to shade residence gardens or, or inhibit light. Birches might be an idea. And it goes, gives us the Latin name of one. Woodland. The woodland areas in the village contain a large amount of previously coppiced hornbeam. Unfortunately, there is also a lot of dead and dying ash. This part of Kent seems to have been very badly affected by the disease. In general, it is often thought to be better to leave ash that is not clearly dead. 
There is some evidence that in some parts, ash is beginning to survive alongside the fungus rather than be killed by it. The ground floor of the woodland is beautiful and any management of the woods should consider this aspect of the environment. Footpaths, there are many footpaths around the village and in general they are very well maintained and show little sign of vandalism. It might be worth considering looking into TPOs for some of the larger, older trees. Good. Okay. Can I make a suggestion that, um, that a lot of that is down to Alf's good work? Yeah. And I think I'd like to suggest the parish council formally thank him. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of that is down to him. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great job on the cemetery, certainly. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Okay. Right. That is Pentman of Trees then. And we'll send that, uh, those slides to. Um, Chris on the orchard scheme. So, can we now go back, I think, Thank you. to Thank you. I think we can now go back to land between Tower House and Mount Pleasant on Stocks Road, which we've delayed for those other things. We can take them up in a um, session. We'll, we'll jump over Stocks Way and come back to that, because I don't think people are here for that one. So, the uh, Stocks Road application, um, we've heard from the developer, we've heard potentially, we've heard from the members of the public of the various things. Who would like to speak to that? Uh, anybody? This is just talking about it, not deciding what we're doing yet. Who would like to make any points within the councillors of what they see as the issues or whatever? I think we've talked about it so many times, so it's so, so a lot of I, out. I, I, I don't think I've got anything new to say. Okay. I think that um, my, uh, in terms of what people have already said to us, um, we've heard about the issue of how it fits into affordables, downsizing, the hybrid note that Ashford have pushed forward, which is what they were talking about in 2021, and then seems to go a bit week on, which was that it was a mixture of market and um, affordable and um, exception and all the other names that they bring in and local needs of course. Um, we, um, we heard several people saying they thought it was a, a good scheme, a nice looking scheme. Um, Kate raised the issue about too much space given to market houses being uh, unfair on the ones who were not market houses. There is a bit of, uh, of daily life about that. You know, like if you buy a, um, a more expensive car, it might be bigger than a smaller car, not always, but that's often true. Um, it's also true that the amount of space that's there, this half came out, the amount of space that's there is partly because it's been reduced from 30 houses to 20. Um, when we first considered it in 2015 and supported the Landia scheme, it was 27 houses on three quarters of the site, with space left for later. Um, so the amount of space is, is almost, well it is inevitable arithmetically, there's a question as to how it's divided up. And uh, it, it, it is factually true to say that the stroke affordables, local needs, whatever you want to call them, have small gardens, there's no question about that. Um, the issue of the path we've talked about and we need to talk about to the developer a bit more because that seems not to have pick, been picked up from our previous discussions. Um, quite a number of people supporting it as I said earlier in terms of it being nice, even the ones who say they'd rather not have it, but at least they, uh, if they're going to have it, that's, you know, it's not bad. Uh, we've heard about the school from uh, Mike uh, Hill, the county member, that actually school numbers are going, uh, requirement school numbers are going down. Um, Paul has mentioned in particular the number, the very low number of affordable stroke local needs, whatever, whatever, that we've built since 96, 1996. And um, Miriam made a point which is absolutely right about the cost of maintaining all the green areas. I mean, the, that is a, a, a straight outcome from the fact that if you don't build houses with gardens on the green areas, then you're going to have to maintain them. And we've only got 20 houses to do it now. Um, 
So that's about where it is. We've had various things sent to us, uh, apart from what's gone in on the portal. Um, Mary Walton uh, sent us a copy of uh, several submissions and court cases. Mm -hmm. We've heard about, uh, we've heard about, um, and I know exactly where I mean, and now I've forgotten it, the mm -hmm. long name Mary, Mary Gissy. I knew it began with Mary Gissy. It's no. usually, I usually go to bed thinking of Mary Gissy, but to, just when I need the name, I've forgotten it. Um, we've heard about Mary Gissy before. The other M, Monk Hill, was a new one on me. I read that today, um, 17 pages, the, the judgment by Mr. Justice Holgate, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place near Hazelmere, 26 or 28 houses in an AOMB. Um, it's rather bizarre. Uh, it's very convoluted. Um, it hasn't gone to the appeal court, so I don't know if it'll hold up, but basically um, we used to always hear about major developments, particularly from Miriam and from Mary. Uh, it was held typically that this was a major development. The one at Hazelmere was decided not to be a major development by the council and by the inspector. And it was 28 houses. Um, but despite not being a major development, the judge then decided that they were entitled to turn it down anyway for all the reasons that we thought were mainly to do with major developments. Uh, it was a very convoluted case going round two sections of the legislation and the MPPF. Anyone who can fully get their minds round it is, deserves a, a, a medal. Um, but it was definitely saying that um, really that the, um, the planning authority can take whatever view they want but it's an A or B. They can, they, they, they've got a bigger range of reasons for turning them down than they had before. Interestingly, we know from the planning committee two years ago that the planning committee did not want to turn it down. If they wanted to turn it down, they would have done. What they did was to vote for a resolution which said, we'd quite like something we know the planning officer has recommended against this. We don't actually want to go against the planning officer. So can you find a middle way, please? Very Blair, right? Can you find a middle way, please, developer? Go and talk to the planners and sort something out. We will find in the fullness of time, and it will not be anything to do with what we say tonight, I suspect, whether the uh, arrangements that have been reached or half reached or they think they've been reached between the developer and the planning team actually hold good and whether the planning committee which is now subsequent to an election take the same view we'll find that out but they frankly they could they could go either way on a toss of the coin can i suggest that we um take david tatterton's suggestion when we talked about a pedestrian crossing or the accessibility mm -hmm. to the north side and all the paving and what have you is as i heard it but he was suggesting that's not really a matter for him so much to put forward as, as, as that we as a parish council should write in, in it, it, depending on the decision we take as a, as, a, as a parish council. But I think that's a, an opportunity to at least ask. Well, we put decide whether we want to do that as part of our decision tonight, yeah. because obviously it is talking about um, a yeah. parish asset, but it's a parish asset, the coronation field, where we we put more path in already and we, we, we have just taken the view that we want people to be going in there and using it and yeah. crossing through it so it seems to fit yeah. together. But like Alan, I've got nothing, <coughs> nothing further to add. Okay, no. so um, no one else wants to say anything? No. So can I then um, ask who is in favour of supporting the thing? We'll go around. Sue? Support. 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 support support on the basis that I've seen as we all have the various different applications going on in the village at the Meadows mm -hmm. and Lloyd's Green and so on and this for me is the, the most attractive of the three for, for, for mm -hmm. a, a long list of reasons I suspect that if we turn this down eventually the, the uh, Borough Council will get fed up as has happened in Harriet Chum, where they eventually imposed 500 houses where there were only 150 proposed by the developer. And eventually, I mean, mm -hmm. the, 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 borough, the, the borough council will uh, ignore the planning authority and just put their own sum 
be warned. Mm. Yeah, mm. and the same insisting Hurst, same, yeah, anyway. So well, I, I'm in favour. Colin? Uh, I would show what uh, Alan has just said, that one of my great worries is that if we were not to go ahead with this pr project, which has got a lot of positives, uh, we may be forced, like a lot of villages around here, to um, have increased numbers. So on that basis, I will support. John? Um, last time round, I voted against, I wrote in against, for a couple of reasons. One, my natural dislike of something on a piece of virgin A and B territory. And the other, because I was at that time, still am, won't be forever resident in that direction. And I, I didn't like the feeling that um, an entry was being made, and it's been mentioned tonight, that could lead to further development mm. onto further green fields in the direction of Acton Manor. Um, things are changing, two things really. One, I'm moving into the village, so my self-interest, you could say, is rather reduced. The other thing is I've become a member of the parish council and I feel now more responsible to look at the broader view. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I had decided before I came here that I would abstain and not vote either way. All right. Paul? Um, for much the same reasons as we've heard, I, I support. All right. I've been strongly supportive of all the proposals. Um, I am not hugely happy about this one, as I've mentioned to colleagues before, uh, informally, because I think that the Borough Council is being irresponsible for the planners by taking a field that can perfectly well accommodate 30 houses and actually could have accommodated more. 30 was being fairly generous with open space and what have you, um, and would have bought 12 affordables with the 18 market, two of them self built. Uh, to then give over the same amount of land for two-thirds of the houses, I think, is irresponsible. And I look ahead, it won't perhaps be in my time, won't be in my time as chairman, but um, sooner or later there will be a need for another ten houses. And then we'll need a new bit of field to go. Those ten houses should have been on this one. So I am conflicted on this. Um, I don't like the fact that uh, um, the borough is insisting on utterly wasteful resource use in terms of virgin land. John's already pointed out it is it's not it's not the best AOMB there, but it is AOMB, it is um, um, grade three agricultural land, not grade two as WKPS insists, it's grade three, I've double checked. Um, it always was grade three, which means moderate to good, not very good. Um, and uh, so, as I say, I, I am conflicted. Uh, I have been wondering whether I would abstain or whether I would support. Um, I don't think I would object um, because I recognise the overwhelming need for houses in this village and wider and local needs. Um, I think, therefore, uh, a rather long way round, that I will in fact support because the didn't go through anyway. Uh, he won't just sit on the fence, but that's not a criticism of John. I understand completely where he sits. But I don't think we should be looking at this, actually, this particular development as a, as a number of houses project. I think we should be looking at it as preservation of the character of the village and the individual ambience of the houses that are going to be built. And that's sure all of them. And, and mm. if you cram them in, then you get something that, in opinion is, is, is less desirable than if you, you are give more space. You are, so, right, you are right, but the 30 was not cramming. The 30 was lavish. But in, 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 the more space is better. And if we, yes, I, well, I, you've I, got half of which. No, no, that's a different that's, thing. No, no, that's, that's, that's not the point. But, <laughs> that's not the point. But, you know, I, I just think that this is not an unattractive development. Oh, this, is, this is a nice development. Mm -hmm. The only thing mm -hmm. is that it is being a bit lavish. But anyway, mm -hmm. I will support it, but I am concerned about that. And just two further points. Following up on from what Paul said about the possible pedestrian crossing, I would like very much the Parish Council to stress that they want value out of the Section 101 or whatever yeah. it is, from the development. 
mm. at 106. Mm. Um, you know, I think I think that is um, very important. The other thing is just looking ahead. I suspect that more houses will be built on that project because people will sell their half of their large gardens and thereby have large capital gains out of the initial purchase. But that's not our business. We're thinking about what's going on now. Okay, the, the section 106 is defined by ABC using certain um, uh, formulae. There will be less 106 money coming in the direction things that we would hope to get something out of, hope, because there's less houses, it's all calculated on that, and we have had nothing, as far as I know, from the relevant people. That's because I haven't asked them. Okay, right. I was uh, told the other day, um, when I was in Ashford for a meeting, that I think there is something like, um, I've got it written down, in fact, I'll tell you exactly what, there is an email now, there's the person, since, um, since, yeah, since Michelle went, uh, the person who's taken over Michelle's job on grants has not done 106, it's gone somewhere else. But, there is, right, it's s106 at ashford.gov.uk. And say, oi, based on you know 1406, what um, what money can we bid for? Under what headings? Okay. He just includes things like uh, 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 how do you develop a new playground and things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll be talking about a few tens of thousands at best. Yes. We'll not get a new playground. <coughs> Sad tennis courts, or whatever. There's a few facilities. Outside, outside sports, inside sports, Big home room. spaces. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, no, so what we've done is we've supported that with um, five and six. Six. Six, six and one extension. Okay, and um, I, I suggest that uh, either one and I will have to write a note to that effect. And also that we will put something to David to talk about this footpath, and we will also yeah. suggest it again to Ashford. If and am I right in thinking councillors are supportive of the idea of trying to break through into Coronation Field next to the garage if it can work, mm -hmm. and, yes. Then, mm -hmm. yes. and then a path would be laid. Yeah. Obviously, that's all down to the yes. developer to provide the necessary and do. I mean, it's beyond us. But it, it is a way. It only makes sense to you, David, if when you go and look at it again, what Greg behind you has already explained, and I, I agree with him, it doesn't look as though there's room for a path. Mm. Agreed. Agreed. That's why I asked the question. Yeah. It doesn't look as though. It and, 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 it, and it mentions it on your chart as being existing, and I can tell you it absolutely is not existing. It's just a bit of scrubby green. Uh -huh. And typically water runs down it, coming out of the orchard, sure. so-called, which is between Tile House and your site. Their land chucks water out onto that and it runs along there, partly in the grass, partly along the gutter, and it eventually disappears into a drain this size in front of the pub. It's a mess. Okay, is that all done there? Yes? I can move on there. We go back then to Thank the stops way. Good to see you, David. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks, Thanks, David. Thanks for coming, Mick. Yeah. Um, we go back to stops way, stops road, the single story oak framed out building, yeah. comprising a home office and study space. Um, did you get anything from any neighbours? Yeah. Does anyone have anything to say? Yeah. Um, I, looking at the, um, the, uh, the elevation submission, uh, there are no height measurements. Yeah. It did say the drawing was to scale. Uh, the square footage is, is 60 square metres. It's 10 and a half by 5 and a half or whatever it is. It's a substantial building. And I was trying to work out, given that the uh, applicant was saying the drawing was to scale, that it's, it'll be 4 metres, which is in excess of 13 feet. Yeah. Um, and that, my question was... Just when, thanks for coming, Miriam, and thanks for the point you made. Um, my question was, given, given that height and the fact that it's right on the boundary, um, what were the views of the, of the neighbour? Because we had this, this property applied for another, was it, was it the decking or something? Yes. Going up, you know, 
and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying I object to it, but I just want to make sure that it's not going to cause problems with the neighbours. It's different neighbours now. It's, it's pear tree net size, it's, isn't it? Yes, yes. That's different. Uh, and, and we know them because they've been along and talked about some of the. No, that's what I'm saying. It's different. Change. They've changed. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was so the thing, that, and I just felt that if, if someone was going to submit plans as part of an application, not to have um, all the elevation measurements on the plan was was really missing the point, or, or not really sufficient. Um, it's got the it's got the ground size, but nothing in terms of the of the height. Um, and it's it's the applicant is the is is representing. Um, uh, what's it called? The Prime Oak. Building manufacturer. Prime Oak, the Chipping Norton Company. So it's not, you know. Your little shepherd's hats. Well, <laughs> more, more than that, yes. I did mention that he, he did say if anybody had got any questions, he would answer them if you let me have more questions. Okay. But that was before the meeting. I don't know. Well, I, I presume that they put in what they're supposed to put in. Right. Um, I, I mean, typically when you see a planning application, they never tell you which house. You know, it's it's all elevations and um, plans. Mm. That seems to be the, what the planners fuss over, unless it. Well, the, with the chap that. who built the one, uh, the, the development for his cars in um, Peen Quarter, yeah. um, that was meticulous yeah. in terms of all different measurements. And you get a really good sense of that. And I went through this and I thought, it, 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 it's 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 just sort of it looks almost homegrown the, the drawing. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I thought I as well it looked like it had windows in the back yeah, from the yeah, drawing, overlooking. and it was right up against the neighbour's boundary. So why would you have windows in the no. rear of it? Yeah, and that, the that's, that's the point I was looking at, is that what what height is the fence? So mm. if you've got these windows mm. overlooking into the, the neighbour, I'm not sure that's mm. going to be palatable. Well, I can't answer any of that, and we haven't had anything come back from the Labour. Which you, did you invite them? Mm -hmm. You yeah, usually do, you do, yes, good. Mm -hmm. Right, well, we are where we are. Oh. I didn't see any comments either. No, no, there's nothing on today. No, there's nothing on. No, I mean, from the public realm point of view, it's in the back garden. It, it won't mm -hmm. be visible, probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the house is set back. So, I mean, I, I suspect there's no reason that we would object to it. Fair enough. I mean, give, given the fact that the neighbours have been advised and they haven't mm -hmm. objected, and, and yes, it is. It's also set back a long way from the house as well. Yeah. So we support it then. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, on we go. The vision of dog waste bins. This is down mm -hmm. particularly because it's raised quite a lot of comment in the, um, in the village. Um, this will be Ron's second specialist subject. <laughs> right, as you know, ABC is replacing all dog waste bins with litter bins. If there isn't a litter bin nearby and where there is room to do so, so they're going to take the what well, they have. As far as they're concerned, they're taking dog bins away. Um, as you probably know, they took the three that were down the streets and well, one at the Ewan Plan, then one near, well, between the Memorial Garden and the Village Hall, mm -hmm. and one down by the cemetery. Originally, we bought three, back in 2003, we bought three waste bins, which the Borough Council agreed to empty. 2012 came along, we had the caretaker scheme. We bought more, mm -hmm. because our contract with Ashford is to empty all the bins, dog waste and litter bins in all the mm. villages. So it wasn't an issue where they went. And since then, as you know, we've just bought one that goes down Back Street. So that's not a problem as far as we're concerned. So the way I read it, we purchased them, they have taken away, so they've stolen our bins. <coughs> I mentioned it to uh, Johnny straight away, and he took it. In fact, took it to the full council. I had Canardington on to me because they've only got one way spin. And he took that the away. as well. And um, in fact, in Stone and um, Canardington, Bipper hadn't, don't, hadn't done ever emptied their bins out, does it? 
They've, they have replaced the one in stone by the sports field, yeah. mm. cricket pitch. There was a dog bin there. They have replaced that with a litter bin. Yeah. I've checked with Al today. That hasn't been emptied by them. They've housed on it. So they're not, anyway. Um, yes, so I have gone in back to, I emailed, um, I went to customer services to know where it got to, street scene who came back to me and said officer dealing with it is now on annual leave he'll get in touch with you when he gets back I then had an email a no reply email from uh, street scene saying this is what they're going to do and then specifically said the three they've taken away two they won't be played they won't because there are little bins nearby by the bus shelter by the village hall but the one down at the cemetery um, they can't replace it because it's not. There's no room to do it. But there isn't a little bin. So I, um, explained. I said, okay, you, I can see why they're doing it. You can take your bin, your, you can put it in your own rubbish, or you can put it in a little bit, any little bin. So I've asked because they can't do anything down there. Could we have that little bin back, please? They haven't, nice. they haven't answered. I didn't go to Harvest, I didn't go to the no reply, but I went back to Street Scene, so I'm, I'm waiting for that. Why did they say there's no room if we have one now? Well, they, well no, they oh, have no room for the little bin. You see, and there isn't. So you've asked for only one? So that's that's what I'm asking for. Yeah. I want that one back. Just that one? Or yeah. buy another one and they pay for it. Well, you see, we can say this one at the village. Yes, I know, you, I know what you yes. mean, yes. And they haven't taken any of the others. Yes. But Johnny, Johnny was all for the getting the, them to pay us, you know, recompense. Um, and things you see that they're listed on our asset register as well. Yeah. So Johnny said, could I, could he have a copy of our yes. that particular yeah. piece, which I've sent to him yeah. with the little bins, mm. so you can yeah. see mm. we bought them. How can they? What right have they got to take away? It was a matter without? of right. It was a matter of copper. But they didn't matter. ask. No, well, they told they everybody three hundred times about the new waste no, 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 system that's there. coming in, mm. but not clerks to say we're taking away all your dog bins. No. We're not likely to get the bin back though, are we? No, it didn't. I doubt it. But I no, would have thought so. The, the word is, is really they'll have to replace it. Yeah. I think I think we might want compensation. Yeah. So, so in the meantime. And I propose that we replace both the street dog poo bin. Well, we can, because all, we'll probably get money in the end. Mm. If, yes. If, if that's what it comes to. Um, John Rather he, than John keep told waiting, me, and why don't we just say, well, yeah, we'll replace mm -hmm. those two. There's bins around the memorial gardens and up there anyway. Yeah. Which yeah. they are replacing with litter bins. Yeah, so yeah. that's not a problem up there. Yes. It's just the two in yes. the street, isn't mm -hmm. it? Should we ask for compensation for distress and anguish? <laughs> but, well, but, yeah, the, nice. but the contracts won't change over. It's on the 25th. Yeah, but that's a slightly different thing. Um, Good I mean, they're all related, of course. Yes. Um, the, as far as the contract is concerned, it's presently with Biffa. Yes. Um, but as far as we and our caretaker cluster are concerned, we did it ourselves yes. as a deal. Now, the fact that the contract is going to CETA, obviously this has stimulated Ashford to go around tidying the whole thing up because presumably the CETA contract will say so much per doggy bin per week. 61 pounds. Whatever it is, per year, per year, per you know, weekly entry, per entry per week. So they're trying to cut the number down because obviously it then reduces the cost of the contract. Biffo have been told to go and do it, I heard it was a different contract. Or whatever, they got someone to do it. Anyway, doesn't, that doesn't really matter one way or the other. Someone went around trying to cull the number of bins. The fact is, they culled some that they shouldn't have done. You now have to pay us. Now, Johnny raised it with officers. He got a, what he regarded as a fairly, um, in public service, they probably say an unhelpful reply. I think he felt it was probably a bit rude. So he raised it at full council, which caused the rumpus. <laughs> and, the, and the chief officer was on the room straight away after and said, Ooh, what have we got to do about it? So it's very much in the... Not too involved. Yeah, it, it's, in, it's in people's minds at ABC. 
We're just going to make sure we now get what we want to have. The way the system worked, because when, when Biffa came in, um, that's when we lost our strength cleaning. Um, we could get strength yeah, cleaning, we, we lost the, because we used to get refunded for that. So Biffa was supposed to be empty mm. all the bins. So, so, so some, you recommended the some replacement? Some empty, Sorry. still. So if you see a blue bag in any bin, and that's Biffa, the black ones... So they're getting carried away. <clears throat> There'll be a certain amount of confusion going on because although the, the, the refuse crews usually know very well what they're doing, the street cleansing crews tend to range more widely and you may very easily find that one goes, oh, there's a litter bin, I'd better do it, rather than, oh, no, I don't do the ones in which, oh, who knows. The street cleansing is not of the highest order, although Ashford said it will improve under the new contract. I wait to see. So... Sally has proposed that we should just go and buy two new doggy bins uh, for the two in the street. Is anyone Second. happy about that? A good idea. Good idea. In, in the worst case, we'll be out for two litter bins, um, but we'll hope to get the money back from ABC. Mm -hmm. we, before we, start, before we can forward the bill to ABC. Right, we'll do that. Thank you, everyone. Now, um, difficult one the space front in the churchyard wall. We're shooting in a bit of a dark here, but obviously Mike will go away and investigate. You've all had that long note. Yes, you thank you for that long note. It's a brilliant research. It won't because it was re you really did some historical <laughs> research. It's very, um, yeah. it's very interesting the extent to which, when laid out yeah. like that, they simply contradict themselves. That's right. However, often I think it's in the words and as, as Mike said, you know, there is highway land, there's land owned by highways or KCC, there's, you know, land maintained at public expense. There's, he said, he actually came up with another phrase, he said something like, land which is not the highway but is used for it, or it's of highway, something or other, he said in my ear. Um, it, it's a matter, of course. Um, the question really is, were we able to, in other words, I, my, my own feeling, subject to other people, is that what we do not want to do is take responsibility and then just get buggered around that we can't do anything because they never give us permission, yeah. or then they complain about it, or then they say we've got to do it again. No way. If we're going to do anything at all, we do it with the freedom to do what we do. No. And that means they've got to relinquish oversight. Now, we did see in the notes that yes. Yvonne did mm. that Luke, so Luke's Hall got their garden against the objection of the PCC see, that's right. by getting KCC to go to the magistrate and extinguish the highway rights that's over that 10 square metres or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, that tells you something. Utterly ridiculous, but yes, that tells yes. you something. Yes, but, but yes. And if, and if it is, they are presently saying the car parking part is nothing to do with us. Well, that's garbage. It's got to be. In one place they say it was theirs, mm. and in and one place they say they repaired it. Mm. And in any case, how on earth did they have a path and a road mm. and didn't have any interest in the space between them? I mean, I suppose it must happen occasionally where... You know, a path goes you know, a different bridge over the railway or something sometimes, but it's not very common. So I thought you know, Alan summed it up very succinctly, and I think yeah. I read it correctly, which was to say our objective really should be, if we can, to get the Kent County Council to repair the parking area and the footpath. Yes. Yeah, that, that would be ideal. And, and probably not. We don't want ownership. If, I mean, I, if they, they make good, yeah. as they did in 1956 or 86 or whatever it was, yes. and yeah. that then, then... 59 to 81. 59 to 81. Yeah. So 81 to 2024. It's, yeah. it's had a good... They've got got a good it, must be, it must be a, a negative entry on the balance sheet by now. Yeah. And I think your suggestion of getting them to... Uh, Repair the car park and the footpath. We've got yeah, the best they, they have, as we do, a responsibility to sustain the, the, the dignity and the appearance of the surroundings of the church, yeah. rather than just leave it to be mm. neglected forever. And they successfully neglected it since 1972. It's time, I think, for them to raise their head. Paul is right, and, and, 
and echoing you, Alan, in saying that would be ideal, it would also be completely unattainable. We ain't going to get that. I mean, you, We're not going to get what? The, I would like to see them fix the brick path because that yes. is where they acknowledge the clearest yes. Yes. obligation and it's accident yes. risk. Getting them to repair the car park, I, honestly, I suspect we have got no chance on whatever. In that case, I would probably come back to Paris Council and say, could we possibly dip into our reserves and do it? But that is where I am I trying to explain I know, I, that I, 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 I think really we shouldn't touch it not unless we get not for the yes, time yeah. freedom. Yeah. If get freedom. Rid, yeah, that's if, the message, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, if we, can, if we can get control, it's up to us to do what we will. But if they're going to say, well, as far as we're concerned, we will interfere whenever we like because we've got rules under the Highways Act and all the rest of it, uh, we're, we're not going to do a damn thing, you can do it, yes. then we'll come and complain about on it. On the other hand, I would be disappointed if we allowed ourselves to be permanently, permanently stymied by their indecision. And their indecision is likely to go on for a yeah, very long time. Well, that's why I raised and, the and, insurance and, issue. That, yeah, and at yeah. which point, you know, that we, we, we might say, yeah. though this, we're going to do it anyway. And it relates to the car park yeah. area, because KCC insists they own it. Thanks for coming. And, 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 and someone has a... I'm Jane, I'm Jessica. <laughs> if, if KCC insists they're going to retain ownership of the car parking area, they also retain the liability. Yeah. And I think that's, a, that's an they angle. No, they've never claimed ownership. No. The most they've done is said it's highway land. Yes. And highway land does not mean owned. It means they've got the rights of saying what happens. Well, and I what think it doesn't happen. Okay. That's the law. Well, in that case, it, I mean, there's a very famous comment that people make about the law, but I won't. Yes. In case it upsets. It's, it yes. sets up. The um, but the point about it is, is, is that maybe we need to draw upon someone who's legally qualified to give us a view on this. Well, that's right. and, we and, will ask Mike, it may be yeah. that they have to be pressed to relinquish any rights. No. They may not be willing to relinquish any rights, then you come back to your liability on yeah. this. But let's but face it, if, they, if they're not problems. repairing the potholes yeah. that are six inches deep in the road, they're not very fussy about a rather rough lay-by. In front of the church. There is another the option that, that they delegate um, maintenance to us without relinquishing ownership. Given the fact it's not owned by highways, it's just part of highways. And then that, that ends up us not having the liability, but we can just get on repair it. That's a possible. Um, they do, of course, pay us for the hair. I, I mean, it's uh, going to cost an awful lot of money. It's a lot. You know, if we do it, bearing in mind what, what it cost at the front of the hall, you're talking a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I agree. With you. It would probably only be loose chips rather than you know just to yeah. smooth it out. But something I don't. Well, I I I'm with you on not expecting anything. Although we might try to persuade KCC yeah. to mm. resurface what is actually a livable with area. Yes. Mm. But I, as I think I said last week, I feel we should sign off with pushing very much in their minds the obligation of health and safety over no. the footpath. Yeah. And uh, you know that if something happens in the future, they'll be <coughs> part of that. Sure. I mean, there, there is a, a small extension to this discussion and it perhaps <coughs> arose because there's always a bit of a dilemma with trying to keep a space for the rector. And if it happens to be a, a service of the church where the rector and the vicar and the curate are coming, then of course that's tends to be three spaces, and if it's raining and they're late, which they often are these days because they've got nine parishes to look after, I think it's a bit stressful, so we try and reserve a place for them, but always I reserve a place for them when somebody zips into the space anyway. Um, and then Nicola and Vince, who, as you know, live in St Luke's Hall, they now find the cones that we put out to try and reserve the spaces for the director. <coughs> too heavy to put back inside the churchyard. So they get stuck out there for the entire week, which causes some upsets around the place. So I suppose as the church warden, I would prefer if we could think about in the relatively near future of putting a sign up saying, reserved for the rector, reserved for the vicar, <coughs> or reserved for the verger, or something like that. Um, so that these places, it's more advertisement that these places shouldn't be parked in. Of course, the school and the village regard the lay-by outside the church as very much their property, and that's where the, all the school staff park. 
I suppose they've got a right to park there, or indeed, have they? It's a church school, and it would seem reasonable, perhaps, they should park out. Well, it's not church. the churches. The last thing you're saying, generally, is that it's anything to do with the church. Well, I mean, if it was me, I would say, look, this is basically... It, it, we, the church has, in effect, been occupying it since time, since the 12th century, and it's basically church property, or it should be, even though KCC have undertaken to repair it, and that nobody actually really does have a right to park there at all and it's you know it's it, 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 it's almost in the church's gift to be able to have a right to park there. But you're not claiming any ownership that we know of. I, I don't know. I mean I am exploring the opportunities. You own the church. I mean, you, don't, you, know, I mean you, might, you might get a legal <clears> opinion <throat> that as a church has been existing there since the twelfth century it does own it. I doubt. You've got a wall between you and it and it's yeah, next to the road. Yeah. Yes. I think, well, I, think you're, was put I think you're just going on a bit of a wander here. Maybe. maybe. I'm just exploring the opportunities that yes. arise. And I, you know, basically, I don't like cars parked outside the church. I'm challenging you as to whether they are an opportunity or whether they're just a ramble, really. No, no, I'd rather work the work. I'd rather the that space, it's own that space one way or another, before they ever metalled the road, because you go back a long time, that was space, I suggest like as not that was where people did drop off their horse carriage or whatever for the, if for, they were not for like the church the church not for the school walking. not for the school for the church service. oh no i understand but it was part of the road to well, well it, was a, it was what you're saying is it was a lay-by yeah uh, I, I, I think that you you uh, both I, made very good points if i was just but, <laughs> but 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 i think the first course of action is to is to tackle mike because yeah. he responded yes, positively yeah. and if you built Pulling yeah. John's health and safety comment, let's go down the fact that hey guys, you know if someone falls over and kills themselves through a bleed in the brain, you know you you guys are going to get the bill. If you yeah. think you're out of money at the moment, yeah. and that's the sort of thing, that's the sort of message that's taken on board. At, the two at people who fallen, Jenny Elliott yeah. and, um, and Roger Roger. King. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty fragile. Yes. And either, yeah. either, yeah. either of them could have had. Yeah. Uh, easily. I mean, really, I'm sorry, could have easily had a fatal event there. Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. So I think if we go down the, the Mike Hill route first, yes. and then yeah. just see where we are on that, and yes. then have a. Well, the outcome well, we of that know, determines the next stage we've of our discussion. Go, Paul and everyone, we know we've got to go down the Mike Hill path. That was acknowledged. What I'm trying to clarify is that we know that we're interested in doing something. I mean, obviously get, get the path fixed if we can, which they're presently saying they won't, because they don't acknowledge it's their path. They just don't think it's bad enough to worry about. The other bit is tougher. We can push, yes, we can talk about the accidents and all the rest of it, but do we actually want to do anything, or are we just interfering, as it were, in someone else's grief here, where if someone falls over on the car park, it's, it's KCC's problem or not, and the insurance can all argue about it, but it's nothing to do with us. We only want it to be to do with us if we want to do something about it. It, it looks pretty awful as well. I mean, when, when there, are cars, there are spaces, it'd be nice to have it properly tarmacked and, and looking good and spick and span. It's, there's, no, there's no harm in aspiring to make parts of the village look nice rather than not looked after for 45 years. Well, one of the worst possible outcomes would, of course, be if they came along and just slapped tarmac right up to the church wall, covering the brick path and pretending it wasn't there. We, we, we don't want that. No, you're not going to get with either. No, we, we, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it, it's, it's probably a listed park, I suspect, somewhere along the line. And, you know. Well, it's certainly a cartilage of the listed building, unless yeah. you rule the cartilage yeah. out at the point of the, the wall. Yeah. And, of course, the complication <laughs> of it extending in front of number 18 and well, I'm just got it. When, of course, in the old days, it was the path. Of course it was. And the fact that it's been the path for such a long time, and the war is not new, suggests to me that that's always been a road lay-by, as Paul used the word. Mm. Take, right. Taking it forward, then, do we need to write to Mick Paul? We are going to write to Mick with the attachment that... Right, OK. Um, mm. That... Um, mm. Yes. Uh, 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 Make it not that Paul, Mike Hill. Mike Hill, that's it. That's the Don't call him Big Hall. <laughs> okay, right, that's where we got to with that. Another job. Right, no, to agree the quote for repairing the wooden fence. Oh, wait, hang on. No, no. <laughs> oh. mm. um, the brick path, are we 
pursuing is that really yes, that's all part of it. That's all part, part of it. Did, did, have we given Yvonne an instruction, so to speak? I mean, are you yes. preparing to submit a document to We've them? got to compose to, a letter to Mike Hill. Yes, I'm very Stuart. I mean, it's much better coming yeah. from you than from an individual on fact comes. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, and so yes, but generally, usually, it's I usually get given the job or take the job of yeah, writing the words. You're very good at we're entirely that. happy for you to do it. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> right, on we go. Where, which bits are we on? No, we're we're on, on eight. 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 To agree the quote for repairing a wooden fence alongside the PROW of the cemetery. Um, Yvonne, I did query ownership. We know that the Mallory's yeah, said it's ours. Yvonne says that the presence of fence we did ourselves before, so we have kind of accepted it. Yeah. Um, minutes rather than the agenda. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Right, do we want to talk about it with the microphone on? I suppose we do, we usually do. I mean, sometimes... We've still only got one. Yes. Have you got hold of the second person? Yes, and that's all I've got. Oh, right, we didn't get one from the first. No, and I chased it and left a message. Saying, you know, could you? Right. The only okay. trouble is the first, my thoughts on the first one, I did ask, um, we were doing something in the memorial garden quite a few years ago, and asked him, and we asked somebody else, and we didn't accept their quote. Right. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. whether, because the, the person I spoke to wasn't the one that mm -hmm. I was expected to speak to. So maybe when it got to that other one, it yeah. was, well, mm -hmm. didn't you get it last time we went there? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but yes. So this second one, Can Kevin I... looked at okay. what was needed. MC. And he has yeah. come back with um, 15 posts need replacing and about six rails, because it's the posts that are rotting yeah. within the ground. He's come up with a cost of, he says, £1,857.45, including that. And can we know the names of the companies who were asked? The first one we went to was Oxley Land Management, right. which didn't respond. And the second one is T&J Fencing, Tony Lambert. He's always very good value. Tony Lambert? Yes. He well, was very pleasant. He's is, 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 is good fence, isn't that the point? He, good, he, he has a problem, which is he's not terribly quick. All right, so you don't hold your breath. But he, he, he's always going to be better value than most of the providers. So so that, that, that figure, given the fact, if you knock off the back, because we get that back, won't we? Yes. So it's got a net of about 1,500 approx. That, that mm. sounds, actually, given the price of timber these days, yeah. that, that yeah. sounds a pretty good, yes. pretty good yeah. quote. But, mm. but, uh, but, but you, when you're going to have to chase him a couple of times, mm. when is he going to do it? He's not going to do that, then. Yeah. Well, are we all agreed on that? Yes. Yes. Good. Okay. Next one is easy. To agree the clerk attending the ICCM Management of Memorials Inspection Workshop in July cost £155. We belong to ICCM, we, we pay an annual sub of 90 quid and a sub up. It says that if the thing is suitable for anyone involved in managing or working in a cemetery or with responsibility for cemetery's equipment required, the afternoon session will take place in a cemetery, therefore suitable outdoor clothing must be worn together with the safety boots or shoes. Learning outcomes and knowledge of legal and health and safety issues relating to memorials, understanding of sex, sector codes of practice and registration schemes, practical skills in testing memorials for safety. Well, I, I suggest that we agree that. Yep. I also suggest that we need to pay for Yvonne's PPE, the safety shoes, because uh, she doesn't have them otherwise. Um, the only thing is that I think that when she goes, she doesn't listen to the blandishments that we've got to knock all the gravestones over. No, no, that, no, no, the chap that was telling me all the book, that was the, the, the thing that I attended, <coughs> it's a question and answer, it was a, a, just a free one, um, question and answer session that happened almost every month, and he was really very good, very down to earth, and you know. Does he really recommend that, knocking all down? No, no, no. No, 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 no I say no. we don't want her to listen to that. Yeah. 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 You, you can, can buy yeah. hinges. Well, Harry Gale yeah. did, did all <laughs> that, for instance. We don't want to do it. Some of them. No, we don't want to do it. Things you have, if they are unsafe. 
then they should come, then you should contact the relatives because it, the, it's their responsibility. Yes. In our yes. Find the relative. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, good. The thing is that they're big blocks of stone and they're not very likely to fall over given the chance. Unless you really, really try, which is what they did. Okay, mm. to consider publishing draft minutes of the previous meeting in the future, Yvonne went off on some free training with Scribe, Scribe the accounting package. They're offering very good courses now, which she does a few of. And they were, it was all on agendas and minutes, and they were putting forward the idea, and there's a lot of people who do do this, of publishing draft minutes of the previous meeting before they come back to the successive meeting to be approved. We've never done it in the past. Traditionally, the old system was what we do until the meeting minutes have been ratified and signed. They're not valid, therefore they don't get published. But you can publish draft ones, marked draft. The only thing is that if we change them, which we're entitled to when we come to ratify them, then you've got sort of two versions. Um, As you see, but it... What they were saying is that if there are mistakes within it, like mm. Sally pointed out, Sally would have said, oh, Yvonne, that was two months, not weeks, so it can be corrected before we get to the meeting. So when we get to the meeting, we've had the corrections made. So are you saying that the draft minutes go out to parish councillors before they go they to go the out public? They go out along the notice no, they board. Get, they get on the website. Oh, they they get published. published. Yeah, this is that's what, it. I'm not saying I, this is what we should do. I'm no. just yeah. pointing well, out. My, my view on it is that we have to publish the signed minutes anyhow as well, so we're double counting. It, I, mean, I, I just think that your time is so precious. Mm. No, it is, and we're, mm. we're, we're, mm. we're subtly increasing what we ask you to do. Yeah. You might not have noticed that, of course. I have, I, I, well, I, 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 I understand well. some of it might make sense, but you know what? It, it, I, I just can't help feeling... I'm trying to understand what the big benefit of doing mm-hmm. it is, yeah. and I can't think of anything. It's, telling people it's, people it's not broken at the moment. Telling people who want to know what we did but if they want to know, they can always listen. Yeah. They can listen or they can come well, to the meeting. We, heard, we exactly. had a classic example yes. today. I was quite stunned to hear that mm-hmm. Kevin's been listening night after night to probably about 15 to 25 hours of YouTube. Um, <laughs> so my view... I agree. I, I think we should stay as it is. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, good. But I, I agree with that. I think that it's uh, unnecessary. Um, email from Nicholas Hurst we've dealt with. Um, that was really a report item. The Village Hall club fee is increasing. Um, that's something that will just be happening. It's just for information. <coughs> They're still not expensive. Kent Men of the Trees we've done. Um, the King Charles III portrait has been ordered. It's free. There's one that will go in the Village Hall, if you remember, there was one of the Queen. Mm. One of the queens. Yes, still is one of the Queens. Is it mm. still there? Mm. Yeah, both sides. Mm. Yeah. Does, does she stay? Sorry? Does she stay? Does she get replaced? Replaced? Well, I would have thought people would have expected it. Yeah. Yeah. Things have moved on that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want it for your front row? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so where, 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 does, where, 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 where does she go? Probably in that little cupboard over there. there. <laughs> it's all covered on the wall space now. <laughs> when I, when I uh, went out as. Um, MD to the shipping agency in Lagos in 97. My predecessor was very cynical, more, more than I am. And when I arrived, he had a huge office, not quite as big as this room, but nearly, and, and stacked up against one wall with about six portraits, one after the other, <laughs> of all the previous state governors. Yeah. And each time one went in their uniform, the next one comes, and he takes it down and puts it on the stack. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely trying to be one in the face of all the locals. So I moved them. Um, so I, I, the answer to your question, Alan, um, I think the answer is actually it's replaced. Yes, yes. And the poor old boy looks a bit, a bit iffy at the moment, doesn't he? Mm. You know more about that than we do. <laughs> he does look a bit iffy, you know. 
Right. Um, out of Hearts new request for donation is a thousand, isn't it? We do. Yeah, I believe it may be that time of year again when I yep. need to request another donation from the parish towards the running of the magazine. A further donation of a thousand pounds or thereabouts would be great for the receipt, if possible. Agreed. Yes, yes. agreed. Yes. Yes. Okay. It pays for the uh, printing. Um, the clerk's expenses exorbitant as always. Yeah. Here somewhere. Yes. Oh, you stuck piling stamps again before the government. Seven pounds seventy-three. Yeah, I haven't bought any for ages. You know, I should thing. buy some more then before April. Yeah. All agreed. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the um, okay working party reports caretaker. Well, apart from um, I think we've already said he spent a lot of time in the cemetery um, clearing mm -hmm. brambles and stuff. Um, supervising the ditch clearance, he took he sent me photos of the work that was being done down there. Good. Do I understand that um, the stall have been quiet about the uh, caretaker of late? <laughs> I haven't heard anything. I don't want to raise it <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> no. Nothing but has been. That's amazing, though. It's winter. Oh. Good. Okay. Um, uh, the finance monthly transaction statements. Um, that's the last thing I think to go through myself. Oh no. Mm -hmm. We've got yeah, the money in from Kent. That's for this current this year. year. Yeah. 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 So they've caught up? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, I got that quickly. And she, the person I ended up, she said, keep my name. She said, send it to me straight away. Wow. So. Good. It's only small changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that is done. It's all straightforward. Good. In that, I've split it so that it goes back to the case. Mm -hmm. Can I? Can I sign this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And the caretaker subset will just be a bit of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is half going to carry on doing that? Left hand side mm. of the cemetery, or is he finished? Well, I haven't seen how far he's he, he, done about half of the test, mm. a bit more than half. Mm. Yeah. 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 Doing a grand job. Mm. Oh, okay, right. But days like today, mm. yeah, miserable. Not so good. Um, right, we got the decision on Miriam's place where they turned down most of what she wanted, which was a bit unfair, I think. But there you go. I mean, all the advantages she really wanted, she didn't get. Mm. And the Ewan Lamb. And the Ewan Lamb got turned down. That was good news. I did. A bit, I did. A bit I did. rich having the Ewan Lamb referred to as the second pub in the village. Yeah, I've heard that, that before from him. Yes. But it's, you know, basically... Yeah, it's, it's true. true. I know it's all true, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's hardly... It's, it's in the, that's in the realms of if a fall, uh, tree falls in the forest with no one to hear it, did it fall at all, you know? I mean, it is not a pub in the village. What it is, is it's not been allowed to reorganise its units mm. because mm. it's in the conservation area. Mm. It is not a pub if it's not open. But there you go. Mm. It, it is a view. It's just one of those things that you can argue around endlessly. Mm. Um, right, the item on the... Oh, we've jumped over it anyway, the withdrawn one on the um, uh, church. Um, open spaces? Nothing to report that I can think of. Why are we going to plant a cherry tree in a memorial? Mm -hmm. Yes, at the right time. Though. And yeah. isn't spring mm -hmm. the right time? No, it's sort yeah. of autumn usually for trees. Not that I'm done. Mm -hmm. That's why your orchard trees all coming out in December. Why didn't we do it in November then? Mm -hmm. Well, November would do. Why, why no, didn't we do, do it last November? Oh, November. Oh, well. <laughs> Tempus Fuji. <laughs> We're trying to avoid the question. Right. <laughs> I'll put him out in my diary yeah. next November. Yeah. Good. Right. Do, <laughs> do, Sally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Good. We need it September. Yeah. You stay on the case. Yes. GROWs. High raise, apart from what we've already done? No. I can see it. Given that he was saying about um, writing in about Sort of spr oh, God. Oh, God, <laughs> areas yes, of road yes. as opposed to individual potholes. 
Well, I really feel Underhill needs a special mention. Because as, as you come up so on that corner, it's different. horrendous. Mm. Mm. The thing is, I usually stop and take photos like um, the one up by Miriam's I've taken. And yeah, the one where the bollards sort of go exactly. deep and deep. And the one on the straight after Underhill, on the right-hand side yeah. near Newbridge Farm, mm. I stopped and took a photo of that. But I had there's not really anywhere to stop on no, that hill to no. take the photo. No. And I did quite a few months ago now, I admit, I asked Darren to go and check it out. I said, it feels awful under my car, mm. can you go and check it out? But he, well, I imagine a motorbike or a cyclist. Yes, yes, it was too awful. Mm. Right, I've got something. Good. From Kieran Doble. Wow, is our hip moving to stage two? It is. I hope you and the rest of the parish council are well. Still alive. <laughs> I'm pleased to be able to inform you that we have had a positive outcome from the TRO and can now move forward to the detail, detailed design stage of the scheme. We received 11 responses to the TRO, seven in support and four objections. I emailed all four of the objectors, explaining the proposed scheme in more detail, and only one objector still stood. Due to there still being an objection standing, this was all sent to our head of service to consider as per our usual procedure, and he is in support of the scheme to move forward. Therefore, if the parish are happy to move forward, I can send you an invoice for the design fee of £1,068 and have the detailed designs for the speed reduction and horse warning signs to be drawn up. I would then send those designs to you with the scheme cost for the parish to approve. Once approved, I would arrange the invoice for the remaining balance of the scheme and get a date booked in for installation. If you can just confirm that you're happy for me to arrange the invoice for the design fee, and I will get that sent over to you. Well, because we've already, already gone on down that road, yeah. I went back and said yes. This is the speed, yeah, just, it? just remind yeah. me, traffic regulation. Yeah, tra traffic regulation. It's the 40 mile an hour limit mm. we've asked for to go from by Paul's round Cooper's Corner and down to the far end of the houses down Peening Quarter. Yeah, plus go. down Wolvenden Road, British Road towards Wolvenden, just a little bit because they've got to have a speed limit somewhere. They can't be on the corner, so it's going in a little bit there. Okay. So basically, Thank although you. everyone will go at the same speed as before, we'll have actually yeah. a water limit. It's <coughs> and it's the first time we've had any sort of result on no, that. That's it. Yeah. It's been going on a long time. Years. I mean, this was... When did you... hmm? Because yeah. I went back straight away. Yeah. As I say, it was February the 29th, and I thought, well, we'll get the invoice in before the end of the year, but mm -hmm. I haven't had anything yet. Mm -hmm. So it still doesn't. So that's good. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you'll pay that yeah. so they can move on. Good. Cemetery Churchyard. Well, um, we're working on the <coughs> application. Greg has done a drawing for me, which we're just making a tiny change to after I went and surveyed it on um, GPS with the phone. And we've got, we know where the boundary is because it was defined as so far yeah. from the apple trees. The difficulty is knowing exactly where it is on the map. Yeah. And, and I also uh, spent out my own money um, a couple of days ago and got the land registry plan, which is there now, and yeah. the title. Um, so <coughs> we're moving forward on that. Um, Presume, presumably, Charlie is going to submit his application. Well, I, you, know, you know, I copied you into the two emails that I sent to Charlie and to Tobias. Yeah, no, nothing. No, my he, he, he came to see me about something else not that long ago, and I think he's. It, it, it's, 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 it's basically for the going to be in the financial the twenty twenty four financial year, which is in April. So it it will be. It's just that we I we wanted to know the sort you know the fee. That's what I asked for confirmation. Remember, so that we had some idea. Yes, he um, did quote that to me. He, he, he wasn't able to be exact. It right. depends how long it takes him to do it. Oh, okay. It would certainly be uh, considerably less than a thousand pounds. We've talked about five hundred. But, 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 but I mean, I, I'm guessing it's going to be four, five, six hundred in, in that area. Five hundred. Well, that's what we've got, and that's yeah. why we. So I, I don't know that you're going to get any more accurate oh, thousand. Okay. And that's what I was asked to do. Yes. Right. No, I know, sorry. Well, next time I see him, I'll, I'll pursue that. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, 
John and I went to Calc last week, the Ashford Committee. Let me just spin a few words of things that came up. You've sent the minutes round, have you all? Okay. Things of importance to us, because I understand that you're not like going to read six or seven pages a minute. Um, you do, yes, but that's only you. Um, 18th of March, which is next week, Ashford is going to be putting out the list, the full list of the, of the um, submitted sites for the plan 2041. Um, that, whatever they put forward, I mean, they'll have the usual ones. Yes. They're not agreed, they're not considered, they're nothing. It's just what's come in, and it will, but it will cause a fuss, no doubt, among the usual suspects. And then at some stage, we will have to be putting forward that we would like them to come along with their road show here, too, yeah. as they did about 10 or 15 yeah. years ago uh, on the three that we had here beforehand. Um, subscriptions for notifications, they call it subscription, is now open for you to apply if you haven't already. The new system, system that you lost, you know? Yeah. It's for parish level. I'm not sure if everyone can apply or only the clerk, but it is now running for beta testing. Um, Odeswood um, scandal up in Bethesda. I've just written a letter to Damien Green because on behalf of Calc because he's part his chairing a meeting in Bethesda on Friday. It, the scandal is that residents, I don't know when they picked it up, but Hoseswood, which is uh, ancient woodland, and it's a triple SI, so yeah. like an AOMB, I mean, it's highly designated for, in, you know, ecology. It started getting industrial scale fly tipping from tipper trucks, mm -hmm. and so they reported it to whoever, and no one did anything, and it carried on and carried on. And the report now is it's a small number of acres. I don't know if it's all that bad, but it's 10 foot deep with fly tip rubbish. And no one wants the responsibility for it. And there's a petition going. Uh, we talked to the police about it because they, they know about it. They're going to attend the meeting that Damien's holding. The environment agency ought really to be in the frame, but no doubt it'll be having to do with us, Gov. Um, uh, but the, the big risk is that what happened to home would be yeah. in 20 months. Yeah. They've Absolutely. Been repeated. Yeah. And, then, and we're talking about organised crime. We've got to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one organises that much rubbish in tipper trucks over a period. It's been, it went on for about six or seven months up till now. Nothing was done. Nothing was done at all. Nothing was done. Just let it fester. It was till now. Well, well, the residents, wasn't the parish council involved? Mm -hmm. The parish council, I think, was, was shouting about it. I don't really know. Old KCC and Cool ABC. I think everyone was just saying it was nothing to do with us. Um, and the trouble is it, that in the book. if, for argument's sake, the criminals made half a million out of it, it's probably now five million to clear it. Mm. Or something, yeah. you know, whatever the numbers are. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we heard from the National Volunteer Centre, if anyone ever wants to have uh, help on volunteering, where they can volunteer, where they can find volunteers. The orchard scheme I told you about. Yeah. I will give the one and she can pass the slides around because we have to decide who I'm doing about that. Remember that the new refuse waste contract starts on the 24th of March. Mm -hmm. They still haven't given us the days. Absolutely. But the things should be coming out to individual houses any day now. <coughs> and I wouldn't mind letting them be very late because they will be. Mm. But they should be. It's supposed to be a week to two before, which is way late. <coughs> there was there, there was something <coughs> on the other side. Our, our door the other day regarding the new. There was something what? The new process. There was an old kind of small brochure. But no day. Told no, 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 I'm no, not saying so no, the day, but the it's about the information, what they want to do and not do. Yeah. <coughs> on the council website, uh, it does list if you put in your address the first two. Uh, collections under the new contracts, both oh, the recycling one it. and the landfill. But because I was looking for the calendar, which gets printed out and put on the back of the yeah. of the of the utility room cupboard door that has not for years, I didn't know. We still don't publish that. that. <coughs> they haven't told us what's going on the website. No. I mean, oh, it's still, it's still a Monday, by the way. Yeah, no, I, I know it'll be Monday. 
Oh, we're new Monday, we're still Monday, you say? We're still on Monday. Yes, okay. yes, Start, yes. The whole thing's My understanding is it's still on Monday. <coughs> okay. That's, it's interesting that that is news to me. I've asked and asked, oh no, we're, yeah. we're telling everyone that we're all supposed to get a leaflet through the door. Mm. Yeah. No one's been told even to look on. I mean, we knew we would get it on the website, but no one's been told well, to look on the Well, hopefully the Royal Mail won't be they delivering those. The Royal Mail, yes. <laughs> Sorry? I said, hopefully the Royal Mail won't be delivering those. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well you know, you get a they could be short of a few pounds. Uh, uh, the telephone directory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. came to that. Yeah. Yeah, the last ever telephone directory yes. has been Thank produced. Yeah. And uh, I said, Gina, why are we in it? And she said, well, I don't know. I think we're the next directory, but I don't remember that. Mm. Um, mm. But there is someone of our name enrolled in the name. Mm. So I don't think it's us. <laughs> they will be one, <coughs> certainly, because they do it by postcodes. Mm. Yeah. Um, planning mm. training, Ashford is saying they will lay on some planning training uh, for, plan uh, for councillors who want to know more about it. Um, Highway improvement plans we've heard about. There's a lot of unsat uh, di uh, dissatisfaction about them. Electric vehicle charging points, we've talked about this before. ABC has been awarded £170,000 over two years to help put in uh, electric charging points. They can give a grant to cover 80% of the cost up to a maximum of 12000 We don't know if the 12000 is... 80% is the 12,000, 100% is the 12,000, but either way, that's the basic numbers. Um, and they've only had a couple of parishes so far put their hands up. So if we... Did, didn't we divert that to Paul Hutchinson? Mm. Yes, and the big power isn't right. Of course, we could put them outside of the church. church. In the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you could get a wire, yes. They could pay for the tower repair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that was the key things from there. Um, what have I done with my agenda now? Here we are. Um, annual parish meeting is next time. We'll start with refreshments at six thirty. Annual parish meeting at seven. That's when John the. Um, uh, Mike Hill and Johnny Shilton come and give a presentation. I will do a presentation which he will give me the material for what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then people can ask questions. We don't usually get very many people coming out. I'm going to travel on from holiday on that day, but I'm anticipating you. Yeah. <laughs> so we really, we just want more than just the sausage roll there. Well, that's their point. <laughs> the, the parish council um, meeting will follow from yes. the council parish meeting. Uh, Going back on that, we'll probably have one more than we would have expected. I had a telephone call from the prospective Conservative candidate for the new constituency yeah. who would like to come along and meet you all. Katie Lamb. Yeah. Right. She sounded young. She, she is. is. <laughs> she, she sounded she, young. In her 30s, I think. Yeah. Significantly um, <laughs> lower than any of well, She hasn't got a predecessor, has she? Really? Yeah. Even, that's not going to cause problems, though, is it? Because didn't we have all this song and dance with the borough? You know, just oh, the chap the who, yes. only having a good The chap who was from Romney Marsh. Yeah. 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 Complained. Yeah. They still come here to car meetings. Yeah, you see, she's... He got very worked up, but I don't I mean, he was a one-off, actually. Yeah, she wants to come. I just wondered if it might all sort of rise up again. Any of them are entitled to come. It's mm -hmm. just that the mm -hmm. others shouldn't complain that they didn't take them. I mean, I don't care. No. I'm just thinking. I think what he got worked up about. Can you remember what he got worked up about? The photograph of Johnny Shilton standing in the bus shelter, bus shelter saying, saying he's going to help with the infrastructure, <laughs> and he did. He did. He gave us money. <laughs> yes. I think it's. I think it's a good idea. idea. Flattering that perfectly. Yeah. Sensible. She should consider coming yeah, here. Absolutely. I think well, our reputation stands high, so yes, and she's likely. If she loses, she loses a seat in the Conservative Conservative she she could. <laughs> Yes, she will be our MP. Yes. Right. Well, I um, did say there are refreshments as well, so she's oh lovely. Does anyone have anything? For, that's at the annual parish meeting. Yes. Yeah. Good. Anyone have anything for the? Um, Are you going to put the toilet block on the on the piece on the agenda for next time around? Only if I get a, yes, an I official. Yeah. Well, I think we need to basically we we. Oh dear, the, the, the PCC does make heavy weather of this sort of thing, and um, you know, t I mean it's the Church of England for you and toilet blocks, you know. Right. Um, Sally, anything? Nothing. Two. Fine. Uh, no. 
Thank you. Anything for information? Go on. Thank you. Just to say that the CPR and DFIP training um, yeah. is fully booked for Thursday. I had five, I think it was, from the outlook, which had to go on the list because yeah. I, I was already full. But I've had a word with Joe and we're incorporating those five in. So yeah, the, that, that, I must have mentioned I, I, what response you had. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, yeah. Mm. So that's <coughs> right, I will close the meeting.